Okay. Can, oh, can you do it while? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. It's just I'll have to change it in the. Edit, 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 edit. I, edit. I knew there was something do. I forgot. Yeah. I thought that you could do that. Yeah. Harbor Town is an all-new series yeah, for yeah, the Miniature uh, Building uh, Authority, the leader in tabletop gaming scenes. Unique, flexible, and playable. Harbor Town will take your games to. Now, if you, it'll, if you refresh it, it'll come up as the right one, so... Okay, good. Duh! My bad. Uh, it's, it's here now. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. Can hear me okay if you're out there. We got about, you know, it's only 723, so. Yeah. Just make sure my audio settings are correct. Yep. Hey, Mike. Mike, can you hear me clearly? See you, Mike. Oh, cool. Hey, John. Good. So you can hear, you can hear us. That's all I wanted. Yeah. We just, <laughs> you know, I'm paranoid. So uh, it's like uh, Anna and I right now uh, waiting for Jason to come on. We're a couple minutes, six minutes still. We'll, we'll come on 7:29. Hey, good.
Oh, cool, man. No problem. Hey, I have my son's birthday today, so... It was a good birthday party. As remotely as you could do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even though, uh, so, Murder, here comes Jason. Is this working? It's crystal clear. Yes, hi, Jason. Thanks, I shut down everything. Uh, yes! Well, I was told that uh, it might be my CPU giving us problems. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, thanks John. Yes, uh, you turn 10. Oh, just shut off Twitch. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah, I got a little bit of reverb, I think, on your end. Yeah, it should be good now. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah. Seems like it. Yep. Seems like it now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I had the Twitch volume on. I had to shut ah, that off. Ah, yeah, I do that all the time, man. I'm like, yep. click that mute. Mute it, mute it, mute it. Well, I was uh, watching Frank, you know, earlier. Yeah, yeah, Nightheart. Because they're rarely on on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. I, I had Blue Blocks on uh, this afternoon and uh, on the auto host, and then I went over to Frank, who's never on on Sundays, but because of uh, Cobalt Con and then him doing the Stefan stuff Saturday, his game, he moved it to today. So, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get them to read into us. You never, never know. Wild Coast tonight, everyone. This should be uh, another fun discussion. Did some digging. Did some campaign digging, mostly. Some great memories here. Yeah, I dug out my um, Gord books. And I oh, was perfect. And, and you you'll should like some of the stuff there. I mean, Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, a giant saw he followed you, too. It's awesome. Uh, good old Mike Bridges. Excellent! All right, here we go. Let's start our, our startup screen here. Hey, right, I was doing pre-tests uh, about 30 minutes ago, and I had last week's startup screen. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to change it. <laughs> I was like, whoops! So, yeah. There's, there's something that retro gamer can appreciate. A thousand comments in uh, the Discord cannon fire last night. Oh my gosh, you guys were on the yeah, that, That's insane. Well, not me. I slept. I slept. I got up. Oh, about, yeah? I woke up about 4 a.m. and started reading the uh, chat. It took me almost an hour to go through it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, if I get a mention in one of those, I gotta scroll through to find it. And oh, it takes yeah. forever to find where the hell me it is. Too. Yeah, I was mentioned <laughs> two, twice in all that long list. And. and I, I only found one. <laughs> it was two little notifications, but I only found one reference. <laughs> What's well, a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's almost impossible to catch up with, it, with that. Well, much. with all the Facebook, you know? Twitter, email, my well, website, Patreon, yeah. oh, yeah, all yeah. the stuff. I mean, yeah. it's impossible. It takes me two hours a day just to go through all of that. So I, I do it like twice a day, pops. Well, Cannon Fire's really been rocking, so mm -hmm. that's good. Yep. It's good to hear. Nah, it's it. Let me tell you though, the community has just gotten this vibrant in the last four months, right? Uh, roughly since the beginning of the year, mostly. Really? It's been a grad, for me, it's been a gradual increase yeah. the past 10 years, but it's it's been definitely on the up, especially the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. Up. And now when people are sitting quarantined at home, a lot of us, then, then that means that it's even better. So. From, from this. So it's one of the silver linings of having you know, pandemics is that people sit at <laughs> home and have nothing else to do. Yeah, an unfortunate silver lining, I guess, you yeah. know? Yep. But that even is the so worst true. of crises have some little silver lining, hopefully. So, yeah. Alright, it's one minute before, so let's hop on a minute early as we uh, And good evening. How's everyone tonight? In May, we're 
We're finally yeah. uh, into the month of May. I'm Jay K. Lurkazumba. Hopefully, you're all doing well and are safe tonight. And my God, it's in South Jersey. I don't know, Jason, if it were you, it's freaking hot today, man. I mean, it, <laughs> oh. uh, and you, you know, complain we've had 95 for for a couple of weeks now, and yeah. now it's been only 80 here. So now it's not, that, <laughs> not 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 for a couple of weeks. Us so Philly, been, us Philly yeah. area people are you know, aren't used to like this. Uh, it was a beautiful yeah. day, but like I'm like, oh man, it's like 80 degrees almost inside the house. I'm gonna be sweating this one out. What do you think, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were good today because uh, I guess we've been closed up here. Yeah, and uh, we had it nice and cool, and I stayed away from that. Uh, humid heat that was starting up in the afternoon yeah it started getting humid out in the sun and all but we, you know it was my son's birthday today so we had a nice party for him and all and uh it, it was it was a fun time yeah. but uh now we're here tonight and uh i'm really excited about this discussion the wild coast this is like my wheelhouse even though we don't have any real adventuring groups in here permanently not yet. It's, it's your stumping ground. It's your raiding ground, so to speak. Your next yeah. door where you go for short adventures, you just kind of, yeah. Yeah, that, that's... that's. It's next door to Ulrich, so it's only a few days' march away. So, and yeah. it's next to Greyhawk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's yeah. next to Hardby. Yeah. And it's uh, next to Celine. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, it's so it it fills it fills right into into the area that we we uh, that we play, and so I've broken it down into sections. Now this is kind of going to be something that um, conjecture. We can go here, but I am kind of for the most part not going to delve into the gnarly forest and Welkwood that much. We can talk about stuff in there, but I think they deserve their own show. Uh, maybe tied into some other place. There's a lot. I'm at the clans of the elves and stuff. I'm I'm more interested in the cities of this, but we can discuss them. If someone brings up some key points on them as well. But I think the when I'm talking about the wild coast, I'm talking about the entire length of the towns from um, in that land area all the way down. And and this is going to be a bone of contention too. Is is good evening. Good evening. Is Highport part of the wild coast or part of the Pomarge? Now, well, that is, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to get away from the Pomarge when you talk the Wild Coast. Well, it depends on yeah. what time time scale. I Meaning, you go exactly. back to the good old days, then it was definitely one of the city. It was kind of the biggest city. There was a counterpart to Hardby in one end and Highport in the other. But, Absolutely. But then, when the humanoids took over the whole Pomarge Peninsula, it just became one of their hideouts, so to speak. So it, it's one of those discussions I like to have because. Um, we did some early gaming in Highport with mm -hmm. Tim and I on almost one-on-one -on -one adventuring. So yeah. uh, this is an area that you can find a, a lot of... Oh, call, oh, box, man, John. Thanks, man. You can find a lot in this, in this area of, yeah. of, uh, of the, wild co uh, the Wild Coast. And I learned something. Th once again, thank you so very much for that. Uh, I'm going to sell you on this area. Uh, you know my group wants a homebrew, but I can incorporate it into my... I'm going to sell you on this area after the show. I guarantee it. If we got to run late tonight for me to sell you, we're going to. Um, this area has all these little tidbits you've probably never even heard of. Yeah. Should we and, go back in story and, and kind of think about what yeah. the Wild Coast was back yeah. in the day? And, and, and Absolutely. And I'm this not is, an expert in this. This is just loose ideas that, that David Leonard can probably correct me on afterwards. And you should definitely yeah. read his <laughs> uh, articles on, on Greyhawk Musings. Definitely. Absolutely. I can highly recommend them. But some of the interesting – this was the – if you go back to the the era of of and Jason, you probably have more to to correct me yeah, on this yeah. too. But but if we start in in the Great Kingdom era when that when they ruled as were on their peak of power, so to speak, this was the one of the wildernesses, wild areas that was not part of the, the kingdom. It was of their empire. It was one of these areas that was left outside. And and I think that part of the 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 uh, they got the the. I would say the the rumor at first, and then the they was stamped on um, and saying that that's the wild, undisciplined, barbarian area, so to speak, or not barbarian. That's the wrong word, since that is kind of have con fantasy connotations. But the left out wild area that was not part of the kingdom, just like uncivilized, like the Romans thought of the barbarian north in Europe or something. Yeah. So, so I think that was kind of one thing, meaning Greyhawk and divers and 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 areas to the east were all conquered by the great kingdom but the wild coast was one of these leftover areas so to speak uh, and according to what 
and Gary Julian educated me on this. It's where Kingdom of Kieran met the Kingdom of your, of, uh, of the Great Kingdom. Yes, right? and that, it was and, in between. Yeah, right, and that's why it was called the Wild One Coast. One of the border. It was a border yeah. land for both of them. Yeah, I never thought about it that way until he yeah. brought that up, and that's where it mm -hmm. got the name. Yeah. Um, so, and it was also not conquered by the elves. The elves left it, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and there's there's Celine right next door. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, coffee blue is a little south into the Pomarge, so um, I have stuff yep. on the blue wizard for Wednesday night, but uh, okay, not the yeah. not but the, the blue city circle. of blue is one of these kind of interesting yeah. things that is kind of left over. Uh, or information that is not that much. It's like a port area, and it, there's there's a little bit on it in in the slavers reference. So uh, to, yeah. one question, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to flip to my main screen, and I'm going to I'm going to really tease the, um, uh, Mike here. Here is what the maps are, and I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to go back in real quick. So here you go. Look, blown up, blown up, blown up, blown up. Okay, I got them all for you. <laughs> So we're ready to go on the entire area of the Wild Coast from top to bottom or, or, um, to answer your question there. But coffee, yeah, yeah we'll try and get some more uh, of, yeah. of, of those questions answered. But I have one answered. theory of, of mm -hmm. Blue is that the interesting thing is that Scant was built by the, the, the Great Kingdom to have to control the Strait of Gernot. And to me, I have the idea, what about if Blue was the, the counterpart to Scant on the opposite side oh, so as, a way, as a way to control it. So it was one of the outposts that the Great Kingdom built in order to conquer that part yeah. of the area, area too. Or you can have it the other way around. What about the, the Kingdom of Kiel land built, built that to try and control the Strait of Gernot that way? Both these are, are kind of interesting, viable strategic yeah. reasons so this, to have a city there. I, I mean, in the old days, blue is just a dot on the map. It's a mention. Yeah. As a town on the inside back cover of the old um, eighty three mm -hmm. set, yeah. but otherwise there's um, you know no old information about it. Yeah. yeah, I think we will do this. Um, I will promise this since we're going to start getting into regions more on Gabin a little bit. Now next week we have our show on uh, on crafting. But I think we'll do a Pomar show because it fits right into my campaign and show all the detailed areas of the Pomar. Now we're going to see a lot because of the high port area, but blue is definitely Pomarsh. I mean, yeah. it is, it is, mm -hmm. it is, it is, you know, uh, one of well, the yeah. you know, Stoneheim, blue, Kale and Lakers are all Pomarsh. So uh, thanks uh, uh, Mac for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. So let's just start somewhere. Why don't we just do that? And I want, I want to, I want to, give you an example of, as a DM, what you can do. And I'm, this is not being braggadocious or anything like this, but Anna and I were talking <laughs> about this. Okay. So you have the wild coast here and you see, uh, this is right out of, um, this is post, this is wars. This is post wars. This is not from the original glossography. The two main references I'm going to use for tonight, even though we could use some older ones, older discussion of Gord books is coming too from Jason. All right, look at look at look at the falling apart of these. These are my workable copies. So I got a From the Ashes box set, and I got a Slavers. A, a lot of my discussion is going to be coming from these two references. Okay. Yeah, I just grabbed a copy of Slavers myself off of eBay. It's beautiful, beautiful. You can take. There are so many little references and blurbs in. Hey, Mike, what's up? In <laughs> Sword Coast. That's funny, Mike. Oh my gosh. <laughs> can you imagine this? No, no, for, not Forgotten Realms. Um, you can do the following, and I did this out of, I did this in my article for, uh, for Varna Fane, all right? So this is from the Last Earth Journal, which is about 32. So, Laser, what's up, man? I'll keep it up, you know that, man. I will keep it up. So this is my article on the legendary axes of Varna Fane. It's a blurb of about three paragraphs in the From the Ashes campaign set. I took that, and I was talking to Anna, and I said, Anna, you're not going to believe this, but my story arc on Varnafane started on adventure number uh, 94, and I'm at 878 now. And yep. it's been going wow. on ever since because there's six, or it says there's probably a half dozen of these legendary dwarven axes here. 
Uh, and that my my campaign, they've only found four of them, and that was like that was in the first years of when we started. That is yeah. like that blurb right there is the entire almost the entire blurb on what Varnafane is in in this in the campaign book and and from the ashes, and you just gotta run with it. And I did back then, and we're still playing with the search for two more of these Varnafane axes, and uh, the four of them are in the campaign. And take a look at the article; it's in the last Earth Journal. It's the last article in the Earth Journal, and uh, just let me know what you think. But where do you see all these other blurbs out there, Jason? Like, what do you what do you, what like blurb do you like out of Gore that you originally think about with the Wild Coast? Well, um, out of Gore, the one of the most interesting things is that um, the, you know the Wild Coast uh, Gore's down there adventuring. He meets up, uh, which I think you'd like is a uh, female cavalier. Ooh. A servant of the Circle of Eight, uh, Deirdre. She's out of Hardby, mm -hmm. and um, one of her claims to fame is that her aunt was kidnapped and killed by the um, um, one of the leaders of Safeton. Ooh. And uh, so they went down there years later. Her cousin and her, and uh, they they made uh, a very big impression on on there. And they had to elect a new mayor, and down in Safeton and. Um, uh, she's featured, her character's featured in uh, the TSR Gord novel, Artifact of Evil. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so um, there's there's um, some Wild Coast information uh, provided down there, and, and uh, they do a little adventuring in the Wild Coast and down in the Pomarge, um, and they end up going to the, um, the Sus Forest to find the, uh, that lost uh, city. Yep. And uh, so there's there's quite a bit down there. They're they're uh, in that first Gord, that second Gord novel, Artifact of Evil, that talks about uh, a little on the wild coast and on the Sus Forest. Very evocative stuff there, uh, as far as adventuring goes. I um I love Safeton. I mean that's a great. I, I'm really excited to hear that Gary started it right there too. Uh, that is that is cool. Yep. Safeton is in is in our scroller list here, and that is in our second grouping uh, to uh, uh, to discuss. But uh, Anna, I know which one you want to talk about. You want to talk about your green dragon, don't you? Well, if you can mention it, so sure. Speak, yeah, the, the green dragon. That's another gourd reference. Is that's that, okay. And and I haven't. And now I realized I should have placed it on the map. It might be worthy of putting it on the map because uh, the the, uh, the there is a just. What, southwest of Mastrin, between the Elven Selene and 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 Wild Coast, so to speak, in the northern Welkwood, there is a green dragon, a, an adult or old or almost worm size, a, a large green dragon. And in the uh, this, that's the artifact of evil in the book. They and is that even on the cover of it? The uh, the Gord and Daedri, they fly it, in. Yeah, on the cover there. Yeah, exactly. And the, the dragon comes out. And I named him in my campaign Rothkor. And yeah. and I named named him in my campaign and put the lair there because that matched roughly from the, judging from the books because they were on their way south and it was, so it was fairly north up, so to speak. So I put him just west of Varnifane. So, but I haven't put that lair and the name because the name might came up with that because the dragon is not named as far as I know in the books. He's well, just that is dragon. awesome, number one, that you named it. Number yeah. two, I know it's on your game campaign map. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, we're coming down from Virtual Cobalt Con. Well, hey, man, that's that's okay, Josh. I, I'm glad you got through it. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Is that uh, you got to put? I would uh, I would do edit number two um, for for your your. Yeah. Uh, so I I should probably before we the, <laughs> the, the new release goes final. We yeah, I, I think put I think score you... there because yeah. I like the name. I've used the name for over, yeah since I read the book. I I simply came up with the name generator for, for dragons and I like the name Rothcore so I just kept it. So yeah, it, there's it's been Rothcore in, in my campaign ever since. There's only one green dragon that's named that I found uh, uh, Vranthus I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And guys, uh, Seeker just linked something. If you guys have a reference to this, Jason does it when he's when he's uh, uh, you know from his um, index. You feel free to link stuff within, and I appreciate it because you're just helping everyone else out with research on yeah. the data. So thanks. Uh, it's really a, a cool thing to do. 
And I got one more. I forgot. The, there you go. Um, man, my yeah. shout outs are really slow tonight. I don't know if it's Twitch <laughs> or what. It's yeah. just super slow. There you go. All right. So let's start. At the, let's start up north. And okay. uh, here, yeah. here, mm -hmm. I got a nice image up here. And let's go to I got my maps all set up. And let's go to this here. Okay. So oh, there we have it. And uh, there, yeah. That's why the, that, the, the border there, that, that weird little country that is by itself, that's Rothgore's lair. It's just in there. So so the border made it to my public map or the one you're using. Yeah. So I'm going to, to make sure that the dragon lair will be there too. Yeah. So, so you see here, and you see Varnafane south of Mistrine, and that's the article, and that's the location of Varnafane. Please, like I said, out of that Earth Journal magazine, the last 132, please read that article, and you get some cool magic items out of it. Um, yeah. The key, there's a lot of key locations on, uh, really in depth on here that really go in. And of course, Narwhal's a great, I love Narwhal. One of my favorite towns yeah. Yeah. in all of Greyhawk uh, mm -hmm. uh, developed because I love the Narwhal headhunters. We'll get to that in a second. But Lord Mastrine dominates this whole area. <laughs> and uh, if you read, uh, who wants to take up the discussion on Mastrine? You want? Uh, I can do it. Uh, do you want to, Anna, or uh, or? Well, uh, you you start. Okay. I, I, yeah, because I, I don't know how much is is canon from from how I used it. Okay. Mastrine yeah. is uh, at least a fourteenth level, probably fifteenth level fighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's neutral evil, and he just. He has declared the 20, lands twenty miles around his locate uh, his keep or his don't come in. Um, he's beholden to no one, and uh, definitely a a, ba a badass. Um, not a, not an anti paladin. Just he does what he wants to do. So I tied him in recently. If you want to call adventure number mm, seven sixty eight. Threat against the Norwell headhunters. And I tied him in, but it wasn't he. I tied in um, a daughter of his who was actually out to kill as many headhunters as she could. He has a daughter who was a, in my campaign, an anti paladin. But she kind of uh, made it look like the, I, there was Iusians in the area and tricked the group. And once, you know, anti paladins do that. I ended up killing her in the end, so a lot of characters out of Norwell, we're talking about high-level characters, made enmity with this Lord Mistrine. Uh, Jason, you know much about Mistrine? Uh, no, I don't. And, uh, you know, I'm just pulling up some stuff on Norwell there, yeah. and you can kind of see it's a... Um... It's a huge... Oh, Jason went, Jason went boop. Yep. Yeah. But it's it's one of the most, and it's one of the few towns and cities that actually has a city map. Oh. That is is in yeah. the uh, from the ashes. So there is actually a, a map. It's a very crude map, but it's there. And th th that map has been redone in several different let iterations me, uh, over the years. Let me show you what I've done with Narwhal. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here's the main map. Oh, I got to go back and put the progress there you off. Go. I there you have it. That's one of yeah, the. Yeah. Yeah. That. This is this is right out of from the ashes. It's a good mm -hmm. map. It shows some major things. And there's an organization called the Norwell Headhunters. Um, are there any reference calls to stuff that Seeker linked? I don't. Jason. Uh, Josh. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I have that. Yes. I have that right here. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, Narwhal Mysterious Places. Yes. Wait a minute, I got I got paperwork everywhere. Yeah, the answer to that, yes. All right, here's my Narwhal packet, okay? Because we're going to start eventually a first-level campaign. Uh, I have that Narwhal Mysterious Places right here. Same same article. Same article. So Narwhal today, there are actually locations in here that... Now, here's our edit. Here's our little edit on the next page. Okay. The edit we have, on a lot of these locations are in this Norwell Mysterious. Thank you. That's a great one, Josh. So we have the Sundered Spear, which is in here. Uh, uh, it's marked. Uh, you know, this is all I have, guys, is my pencil edit of the map blown up. We yeah. have Carter's Trading Post, which is in this article. We have um, a couple of our my other campaign locations, the Quill and Inkwell Inn, Quetzal's Trading Company, and, of course, Pete and John's Teamsters Service, uh, Ooh, Carter's Trading yep. Post. But most importantly... 
the Trevin's Hall of Heroes. Now, Trevin Nim is one of Bill, the Master Crafter's characters. His best friend, Brolin, as one of the legendary axes. He's an NPC, especially Priest of Clangadin. And they have a group, and they have that sliver of a building just north of the Norwell Headhunters headquarter. And they work with the Norwell Headhunters directly. Now, what are... Yeah, you like that crisp handwriting? <laughs> so, now, what are the Norwell Headhunters? Anyone want to uh, take that up? Well, well we, I'm just, I have a oh, look, sorry. Go no, on. no, no. I just wanted to ask you about that map. Is it from the Dungeon eighty five? Um, that's from the from, that's the, from, the, from the ashes. ashes box. Oh, that's yeah, from the, the campaign. From the yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good it's a good map. It's a good yeah, map. Yeah, there've been some um, remade yeah. remakes of it. But I just go back to to Mr. In or yeah. Mr. Ryan a, a little bit. The way mm -hmm. uh, and you said basically all I know of the, the from the public adventure that he's like a black clad neutral evil guy or lawful evil and and he has a bunch of spellcasters and high level ones and they don't seem to do much they just seem to hang out and defend that area and they hate humanoids with the vengeance so to speak as well so that's why they get i guess they're tolerated by norvellians and 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 the safetons and others so in my campaign, I want, and now I'm spilling some some stuff that my players should not know. But <laughs> but the uh, I made them. They are actually uh, refugees from the Great Kingdom. Oh, so when the, okay. the Great Kingdom fell apart or started to fall apart, the the uh, the Night Protectors realized that they had assets and and stuff they wanted to get out before the thing fell apart completely. So they actually took. So he was a high level official in 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 the Night Protectors, a Hextorian. So he's like a fighter cleric of of Hextor, and he took his his closest uh, retinues and 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 others helpers and and whatever. And they took a, a, a quite a handsome coin and stuff from, from the Great Kingdom, from the falling apart, as a way of safeguarding it, so to speak. So they took some of it out of the country and simply established a base somewhere and just sitting hiding. And and then they will see if they can sponsor something and go back. And, and, oh, cool. and he doesn't make up his alliances. He doesn't know which to trust, the North Kingdoms or the United Kingdom of Alyssa or whatever. So he's kind of biding his time and, and either staying here or ally himself with someone here, just stay by himself or go back and ally himself with one side but there's plenty of treasure to be had in that place i can imagine yeah that's why he, <laughs> he, he protects us that that's the the kind of a, a seed for some adventures that i i put in there so i don't think you want to mess with 15th level characters in all his no and got no, out they, they've been they, oh yeah they've gosh. been higher so he's like 15 yeah. 16 and oh he has a bunch gosh. of others that are 10 12 and stuff so and they did it because they simply took a whole bunch of of people from the night protectors to defend it's i took the story kind of from the 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 um uh, knights uh, holy crusaders that that mm -hmm. took away their holy uh, or kind of treasure yeah. and hid it because they were under threat so to speak so, so this is kind of just a, I, I stole the idea from from history so great idea yeah what do you say to that jason well i i just gotta say i was shocked but then i realized uh this is pathfinder right so, yeah so you know i'm thinking <laughs> And 15, 16 level is so horrendously, you know. That's big. what he is in the From the Ashes book, Jason. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, wow, he's, that's yeah. too many for he's, you. you he's, know. He's, he's, yeah. he's one. Him and like Sharon Varen Valinar from yeah. uh, the the Free Reavers. You don't mess with them unless you really yeah. want to get your ass yeah. kicked. It's, I yeah, mean, it, seriously. So yeah, these uh, are some of the the highest officials from the Night Protectors yeah. that were the most powerful order in in the country. So that's why they are really they are a bunch of well equipped people. But on the other hand, you never know. They someone might be renegade within the group and steal some treasure. Or you never know. So so we'll see yep oh i thought i had all right so i thought i had a, a picture of mistrine Mist, we have mistrine's low um actual heraldry that um, um yeah that's up. Mm -hmm. oh here it is castle mistrine there we go yeah. 15th yeah. that is right from the blurb oh. from the yeah. yeah yeah i i'm i'm just not that <laughs> high level player uh, a dm so uh, here's Mistrine's uh, symbol, heraldry. Uh, yeah. Starting with this heraldry here, that's Narwhal's. There's yep. Mistrine's heraldry right mm -hmm. there on my, uh, uh, near my head right here. Okay, the that's bleeding Mistrine. heart, I, I think, is the description. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, so it's like a... It's cool. Cut through, yeah. Yeah. So Mistrine oh, is someone you don't mess with. The Narwhal headhunters are cool, though, because what they are is base of bandits that are hunting down bandits and humanoids in the area. And it's kind of ragtag group, kind of like the stuff that I like to hear about. 
Um, it, 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 uh, and that's why we're, our new group of firsts, whenever we do them, we're going to do them in the fall. We may wait till 2021 because of the COVID now. We'll be actually in Norwell uh, working with Trevin's Hall of Heroes and all the other things going on. So this is a new first level area that we're going to start in really a cool area and i would some of the other new people may want to do that as well and maybe tie some things in with this so here's on the narwhal headhunters uh includes thieves and rangers among and bandits in my game a squad of 50 and um romarian to who is a brother of uh of a major character in greyhawk city as well uh is he's lawful good ranger who runs the group now a lot of people say blade storms run the group yet I don't know. I don't like that story at all. I like Bladestorm the way I have her, of course, because I, I don't make mistakes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, uh, and then there's Bladestorm. Bladestorm is one of the best stories in the back of From the Ashes. If you know about the box sets, if you know about the Greyhawk box set, and then you know about the From the Ashes box set, they have some really detailed NPCs. Uh, and one of my favorites of all time is Bladestorm. And it's a really great story. She is... Um, they, she just calls herself Bladestorm, and they call her Bladestorm Headhunter is her last name. Half elf, she's one. She's especially priest of Tritharian slash ranger. Kind of against the rules to have that, but who cares? It's, she's an NPC. And well, yeah, exactly. And when I do NPCs that actually adventure in parties, I make character sheets up, and I have it here somewhere, and it should show. So I've actually developed this character, and here's my Bladestorm character sheet. She's now 8-8, eight, eight. all right? Now, I do a little jokes. I'll give someone, I'll give someone a, a cookie if they can tell me who's that the picture of that's the Bladestorm character looking pissed off. It's a young someone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Bladestorm is, uh, we have a figure four and everything. She adventures uh, with a lot of the Iron Brigade in that area. I, uh, Marco has used her as an NPC in her campaign, in, I'm sorry, his campaign. Really cool character, developed right from From the Ashes set. So, something to keep. No, uh, <laughs> it's actually a young Julia Stiles, actually. So, there you go. Uh, we've actually set up Narwhal as well on our map. This is pre-streaming days, guys. Um and these are all builds, crafted buildings for, for Narwhal, uh, including the headquarter, Hunter's Headquarters and a couple inns. Um, we did a Greyhawk Kids Adventure here. And that's, uh, this is, like I said, I think this is 2017 before we were streaming. And um, there's an adventure in Dragon Magazine where there's a well that got, gets poisoned. I forget the name of it. Uh, but that well, um, of course, Murlocs came out of it because everyone loves my Murloc. So uh, we had a little <laughs> one with, with the kids. It was a kid's adventure out of Norwell. But that, you know, most of those buildings are custom crafts by Bill. There's a couple MBAs there. So, yeah, it was. It, it's Julia Stiles when she's like 18 or something. So uh, did, definitely. Did, did you yeah. ever get uh, Murloc minis, Jay? Yes, they're right there. Can you see them? You can barely whoa, whoa. see them. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I can't see them. Um. They are, I forget what they're, I'll try and find the pick in, in, and I'll pop it up on the screen, but absolutely, there are Murloc miniatures. So let's go back to the map and see what, what do we miss here in this upper we, area? We have one, one thing very interesting in that area that, that I have tied into Mistrin a little bit, and oh, that's cool. the Wailing Halls. Oh, that yes. North yes. of, of uh, Norval. Yes. Have you used them? I have the not Wailing used them. Holes? Why don't you discuss them, Anna? Please. It's it's uh, the story is kind of fantastic. It's, right it's the a fortified old castle that is now derelict. That was the home of a mage uh, called Bel Zane uh, from originally from Almor, and he was evil and he slayed his helpers and 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 others, and and started terror. And then he uh, started getting contact with a, a devil to to or or someone a demon I think to try and, and interrogate about the adventures in Rossi's and, and the fall of the Great Kingdom. You can see a, a connection to Mustrin here. Mm -hmm. And 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 so that's the one to me is it, the reason that Mustrin took up camp in this area because he realized that 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 poor uh, Belzani was up to something. And 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 so he he kind of got crazy about the contact with that devil, devil, demon, or, 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 or whatever. He was trying to conjure for knowledge, and he, he went crazy, and he and now you can hear his wails or whatever. I kind of twisted that story a bit and built on it and said that, no, he was not. He was discussing 
something um, or, or trying to find out what happened in Rosas. Belsane was fleeing from Almor with treasure and and stuff, and and Mastrin found it out oh. and tortured him to death, and and, oh. and hung him up yeah. To, yeah. To, <laughs> to 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 actually <laughs> strung him up and 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 tortured him so badly, so he's now an undead ghost, and wailing and screaming inside there. And then Mastrin sold the story, saying he wanted to do that, and and <laughs> and 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 that is, and now I'm spilling even more beans from, from my adventure. A lot of Mistrin's actual treasure is in the Wailing Halls and, and guarded fr from that. And Mistrin has also charmed him, him, himself with a, um, a Banshee, so given the chance for a Banshee to, to take up Ness there too and, 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 and kind of they're on good terms. So the Banshee is now helping to wail and stuff and, and has, a, has a good hideout for her operations to, to get even with the elves and Selene and stuff. So 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 that that way Mistrin is more tied into a lot of things around that most people realize, so to speak. So so I I, I spun the, the original story one step further. So yeah. He's a great bad guy because it's yeah. not macro, all world shaking. It's it's regionalized, yeah, it's, mm -hmm, which is a good exactly. thing. Yep. Uh, definitely a definitely a good perfect thing bad that. guy for a high level campaign that is is kind of high level but not world shattering. So, so, uh, so I definitely want to send my players. But on the other hand, now I spilled the beans, so now I need to twist the story <laughs> because I've already. Told, yeah, that's what. The, yeah, that's what the players think now, but they're going to be wrong. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, but this is how you can. We, we talked about that last week, and, and how to to get your adventure going. So you take things like this, and then you can spin it, change it, tweak it a little bit to to kind of to suit your own campaign purposes, so to speak, and build a campaign out of it. So, yeah. Definitely a fun start to this upper area. <laughs> uh, some good stories. Yeah. Um, uh, well, go ahead, Jason. This, this is the thing with Anna. I, I, her adventures, they sound as good as her maps. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I'm always shocked when I find out that, that I'm hearing these wonderful adventure ideas coming from you. Because uh, I didn't know. I, I was just thinking maps, maps, maps. But my God. Yeah, I, I, the maps have a purpose, so to speak. So I can get all the details and, and, I, and figure out the connections yeah. and stuff. I know. But boy, I, I really, I'd, I'd love to see write-ups on these adventures that you've run. Yeah. Uh, here, here comes our one of our favorite Swedes, along with Anna and Rethick, Skagus. Oh, Skagus. What's up, Skagus? Hi. Can you change as a GM your plans unheard of? My mind is always instant TPK or long drawn out TPK. Well, <laughs> that, that. <laughs> so, uh, it's tough. I mean, I really am not a TPK. Well, you have guy. to adjust them a little bit on the fly. To I, I try to adjust them so the tension is 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 high when needed, so to speak. So so yeah. Yeah. See, see, way I ran things. Uh, you know, things would just go from bad to worse in, in a couple die rolls sometimes. And uh, mm -hmm. it, that players, I, I, I never tried, um, you know, I didn't think set things up, but I'd never held back. So the players would take themselves down this road and maybe push themselves a little further than they should have. And then all yeah. of a sudden, bad things happened. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at some point, you know, no matter how you play the game, you're you're yeah. a die roll from death sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to have these kind of <laughs> moments that that depend, and you should have them regularly. Every not every session, but if you have ten sessions, they should be at least three of them should be nasty as hell, so we almost barely survived, so to speak. And I yeah, think the it, best thing is when the players scare themselves into believing this is going to go to hell quickly. That's the oh, best ones. So. Um, any other uh, uh, closing comment? We can always go back to stuff. I know Zulern is not really a big deal. It's a village with 315 folk run by members of guilds yeah. that pay mm -hmm. homage to Greyhawk. There's, Hawk. A, there's, yeah, a, there's a whole of bunch things. of small places up there that, yeah. that have cool little descriptions and uh -huh. Karnak, Pelgarin, and, and stuff. So, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them up there. Tricaster, yeah. uh, Kurustath, or however you say it, it's up there. So, Bad Deep, Camp Edalorn. Yeah, there's a whole a bunch ton. of them up there. All yeah, right. Big sorry map. guys, my ten second rule there, you know. <laughs> yeah, for J yeah, the ten second rule for Jason. All right, second section of the map concentrates on the Safeton area. Oh, um, the big, big thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Safeton. Yeah. Now you may have this, or you may not in your game. 
But if you do not know who Turin Deathstalker is, you should. Turin Deathstalker mm -hmm. is an ex or maybe current guild master of assassins out of Greyhawk City for you. And he hates humanoids with a passion so much that it kind of skews his thoughts on things. In From the Ashes and a lot of uh, published sources, he is uh, in Safeton currently. Okay, so this is uh, this is something where he has left Greyhawk and now is out fighting on fighting the humanoids in this area out of Safeton. Yeah, yeah. yeah we need to mention this that Safeton and Narwhal were independent small city states mm -hmm. up until the war when when Greyhawk took over and and helped them secure the area, so to speak, and they became the domain of of Greyhawk, and and then they became under Greyhawk in rulership, so to speak. Yes, and uh, or you know, there's other influences in the area as well, which is which yeah. is cool. And then you uh, this, see this red line here, which denotes where as uh, like humanoid progression. Exactly. I actually look, they, yeah, yeah, it's pretty high up uh, from from the ashes. A lot of people yeah, on they lower. stormed uh, the Safeton were yeah. desperately after the war, sitting waiting for the humanoids to attack. So they were it was grim, and they even they were examples of they chained some some prisoners outside so that we yell and scream when the humanoids come and and stuff like that and and less defenders. And then there's a lot of of it's Safeton is a very interesting adventure area. So it it is. Cromdraught asked a, a really good question about um, a turn Deathstalker. He would not have half orcs in his in the Assassin's Guild, if I recall, in Greyhawk. I he don't trust think so. Them. He wouldn't yeah, trust them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question, Cromdraught. Absolutely. He he would not trust them. All right. So Safeton is a is a. Um, we'll go back to the smaller map here now. I'm trying to make sure you guys can all see it clearly enough, but it should go back right to that map now. Okay. Cool. So. You have, um, and just because they wouldn't, where we're doing area-wise, you have Karnak, Pelgarn, Safed, and all the way down to Cantona, which I want to talk about a lot. Wyvern in as well. Uh, uh, and, of course, Pascarell, which is all, it's really a, yeah. another cool mm -hmm. thing in the mm -hmm. book. Really yep. cool. So, um, Anna, pick one and uh, uh, let's discuss. How's that sound? Uh, let's see. We have uh, do, 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 do. we have the, the uh, eye bite was one of these little... Um, yep. uh, stuff that has a, a, a magical little thing on top of its castle, uh, tower, I think, that blinds and, and stuff that was, so there's all these kind of little gems on, on description might only be two paragraphs or three, but they have something cool. Every little place there have something cool. And and Castle Sulafre, or however you pronounce it, is another one of these little cool things on the border. But you have the border with Wyvernon and stuff. That's the, the little uh, Wyvern's run that is now de facto the border between Pomage, Humanoid Empire, and Greyhawk after the war. So so that become the de facto border. And, and I, I, yeah. Ibite has the dude named Shiner, who is the wizard who actually can, uh, twice per day, the twin towers of the castle can shine with a brilliant golden light, yeah. which blinds all those outside its walls within mm -hmm. 400 yards. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, so... Um, so so there, there's a lot of cool little things here and there from, from, from this area of the coast. Uh, Skagath, uh, yeah, uh, I'm over four, so. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. Uh, uh, we shall see, Skagath. We shall see. Thank you for that, uh, for that uh, idea and uh, for the uh, support you've given me since day one, man. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, there yeah. you go. So Jason uh, has found a lot about It's mostly all in the slavers and nothing beyond yeah. the A1 to Dame 4. Dame Gold is, is another one yeah. interesting that is in the, the uh, that's yeah. in the, um, oh, the, the, the campaign from the slave lords uh, and uh, um, does someone uh, Jason you want to talk about her do you know a lot about her oh Jason may be out right now so no no I yeah I froze out there no I I, I... Ah! oops yeah we'll see yep. uh -oh. he's yep. trying his best yep definitely I, I, um so pl please fill in. You you have some cool stuff here, Jay. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about Wyvernin. Mm -hmm. That is out of the slavers. Okay. Let me uh, scroll through a little bit here. All right. There's safety. Another another. Uh, you know, it's it's a sketch, but it's it's functioning. It's a functioning yep. sketch. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, uh, there's a whole cast of, of characters from the Damn Gold Party. Uh, Josh, you're absolutely correct, uh, and you may want to um, 
well, we got the references up on that. We may want to actually uh, get a listing of them uh, uh, at some point because it is a cool, it is cool information there. Yeah, Wyvernon is, um, and, and uh, we'll go back to Pascarell. Um, Wyvernon, I think it's the last one I did in this one. Oh yeah, I got some good stuff in this section too. Every section. Yeah. Well, I just went right by him. Wyvernon is run by a priest of Hextor. Okay, that is a really crazy um H hendred blerid is his name yes, and that was it yep. yes and uh, here we go in wyvern and, and they have these you see in the background of this picture this is another wayne reynolds picture that's long yeah lost mm -hmm. to, uh lost to poster uh you know thank you Evie. Yeah. thank you so very much yeah the um, originals one, yeah. yeah oh it's they're awesome the, the, the artwork in this is awesome in the slavers reference he, he has a group of evil gnomes with him and they get pitch set, and they do all these things. Oh, Skagath is kicking out the gift subs, man. He does not let any of the villagers leave. There's like 130 of them. And he says they're going to paint the walls red with orc blood every time they attack. And every time, it's like super high morale. And it just goes to show you that evil can actually be on the, uh, the side against evil in some instances mm -hmm. in this story yep. well uh, especially in Greyhawk yeah yeah, yeah it, it, it's great so that's why I love it so very much um, look at that man you oh you gave one to, you even gave her you even gave, gave something to Kristoff uh, <laughs> 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 oh, he, he's lurking uh, yeah you hit all the good Big Mac as well nice Gaga thank you so very much you hit some yep. really great uh, viewers tonight oh hi David yep yes Big Mac yep yeah absolutely uh, so check it out out of the Slaver's book, and you can see how much use I got to, I get on this. Mm -hmm. Yes, my book is in pieces. Now I have a I have one I just recently got, um, but this is my uh, my use one here. Um, really a cool story, and I've had my characters. I've actually been had characters been there one time, um, and so um, Jason, you okay uh, again to? Uh, oh, I'm pick, fine. I'm fine. Up the story there. Yeah. 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 All right, so let me head back here to see it, to this picture here. All right, so let's do another one here. Let's just go in order of what I have, and that is Pascarell, which mm -hmm. is really yes. a, a, a really neat one. It has heraldry. It has its own heraldry. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, did you? Where did the heraldry come from on this? It comes from the from the ashes. It's on okay. the campaign map. That there, there's like the regular Greyhound Darlene map. There was a reprint of the Darlene map, but there were also a campaign map covering the area around Greyhawk and, and, and this area. And that heraldry and a bunch of elven heraldry was on that map. So that heraldry came from that map. Yep. I just vectorized it and, and, and kind of tweaked it a little bit to be suitable to put on my map. So, yeah. Yep. Pascarell, um, it, it's, they have what's called the cockatrice riders. Now, they don't yep. ride cockatrices. No, but they have feathers from the <laughs> in their hats, I think. Yeah. Yes. So during the Night of Terror, Pascarell's orcs were all, uh, some 20% of uh, uh, the village were not slain. They were deemed thoroughly reliable. Black-hearted bandits scum like everyone else there. So it's basically another evil town that said, you know what? We're going to fight the orcs' incursions. Um, uh, they, they spared the orcs there, and those orcs are loyal to the bandits here. And uh, their attitude toward invading orcs is who the heck do those upstarts think they are? We're here raiding and pillaging first. So they all have cockatrice feathers in their hats uh, raiding. It's a really another cool discussion. Um, and I love that they have heraldry too. That's yep. what's even mm -hmm. more neat yep. about it. I, I, this is another great town to start something in. Like, this is cool. Wyvernon's cool. And Narwhal's cool. It oh, yeah. should be upgraded to town from village. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to put that on the list for, for okay. the final release. Yep. Because I realize that now that is a village and it should be a town. So, yep. I'm going yeah. to do that. I can do that while I'm, I have you to put it Excellent. in the, the uh, list. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, the, the writing in these in these two books, in my opinion, you know, are brilliant. Uh, you know, I don't like a lot of the From the Ashes stuff because of all the ones they killed off, but I love the detail in this area yeah, of well, Greyhawk. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. I, I, I mean, that is the thing with, the you know, the uh, From the Ashes. Oh. Jason's having a rough one tonight. That's okay because we love him dearly yes. anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, but um, he's he's correct on that. That uh, from the ashes really did a lot that a lot of people weren't happy with. But detailing up small areas like this 
is something that um, is just I mean, you mean well you can take the area around uh, Norwell and Safeton and run a whole campaign from level one to ten, fifteen, easy. Yeah. That there's so much awesome stuff because you have everything from 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 cities to elves yep. and coastlines, humanoid incursions, yeah, old I've, undead ones, ghost stories. Yeah, you name it. It's basically yeah, everything. I've done a lot there. of dragons there, yeah. but but never run a wild coast campaign really. Yeah. Yeah, so you can. It's been an area I've been in and out, back and forth a little bit. It's not been a complete campaign in there, but I've been there quite a lot. And 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 I, I just wanted to to scare my mid level players with <laughs> all this kind of shit going on, basically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And my one of my Verbonk, uh, Verbonk campaigns went astray into the Safeton um, Wild Coast Highport areas. So. Mm -hmm. It's. It's a brilliant area because there really aren't any one, any rules. You're not tied down uh, by by a law like you are in Greyhawk City or Firyundi. If you want to have at it as a bandit in this area, play a neutrally aligned campaign, you can have at it. And that's what I really like about it. All right, this one, this next place is is one of the bizarre, most bizarre locations in all of the Wild Coast, and that's the ruins of Cantona. This is yeah. out. Of, this is out of the Slavers reference. Yep. Now, this has, you see those dots around it? That's an anti magic zone. Mm -hmm. They thought for defensive purposes, whoever did it years ago, it was great. It was left over by whatever wizard did it there. Well, you know, it doesn't, no magic, magic barely works. The further in you go, the less magic works. So the slavers use this as a port heading up from Harby all the way down to High Port and beyond. Now, I use this area. There's shipwrecks all over the place out here. I use this area a lot. And a recent adventure, which I ran, streamed probably in 20... I'm going to say this was 2019. Now I, I, I lost my list, of course, because of, I got I got papers everywhere, guys. Uh, this was called Power Play in Harby. And what happened was um, the second-in-command of... Uh, Harby, she was, uh, her ship was uh, uh, destroyed and captured, and they took her here, and they had to rescue her. She was in a, located in a base outside of, uh, it was uh, the Gurnish gear, uh, outside of Kentona, and they had to go. Well, little be known that Michael Baton's group, the Furies, took this mission without him knowing ahead of time. Remember, all the wars and the vengeance and all, all started because of this incident here. They don't have magic items. They have machines of war. Like a flame, like a flamethrower thing out of Doctor No. Do you guys ever see Doctor No with <laughs> the the flame throwing tank? They actually have these, and these are written up, and this will drive Anna a little crazy, I think. Right? They have war wagons, uh, cauldron, all sorts of crazy because no magic works here. So they came up with these mechanical devices, and they're all noted right in there. Now we really haven't used them, but they have mines out in the water. And this is a picture. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, Th yeah, you like th this is a picture of the Fury ship, which had blown up previously, and these mines coming, and the uh, Harby Irregular ship about to hit these mines. And you can see there's bodies strewn all over the place when they get here, including one of the Fury's bodies out there on the wreckage. So. Michael Baton's original mercenary group that he created is coming, is destroyed during this because it was all NPCs, so it's my right. I, I wiped them out. except And uh, there's a little close-up. There's scrags out in the water. You can see the scrag in the back of the boat. This was a fun, fun, a fun, fun one. And they had to get, and they had to get, and they had to rescue her. So uh, there is uh, one or two of, uh, of course, my, Mark's two PCs, I let them live, and they survived. Like, because Michael wasn't here, but Barda was the one of the characters that actually survived this. She was holed up in this little uh, uh, hole there. And uh, there's a stone bridge spell by the Earth Elementals to cross. And it was a great combat. I mean, this went on for a couple weeks. Um, but someone shows up during this. And this is another mention. And if Carlos was on, he'd really get a kick out of this. So, oh, I hit the wrong button. Oh, my God. My fingernails <laughs> are getting long. I apologize. My fingernails are getting long from COVID. And uh, no, I'm just, here we go. All right. The Missing Marquesa. Oh. This is a great story. 
So everyone knows Marquess is the, one of the original slave lords. She's as evil as it comes as an elf, a high elf. She's a fighter mage, and she does all these experiments. I mean, she's not a dark elf. She's a high elf. This is she's as evil as it is in Greyhawk. Well, she has taken all these elves and she has brainwashed them and surgically altered them to make her them look like herself. She has Marquesa the Black, Marquesa the Red, Marquesa the Gold, and then there's this Marquesa the Green. Well, this Marquesa the Green was sent out in this area can from Cantona North, all the way up to Safeton, and she disappears. And this is right in this is right referenced right in Slavers. Um, so they don't know what the Marquesa doesn't know what happened to her. Well, what I have done with her is she has kind of gotten her memory back and she is now when the NPCs or the player characters or the groups are out in these areas, she'll randomly appear at a time and help them. So this Marquesa the Green is actually, you know, with coming back with her memories and she is she works with them. And of course one of Alan's characters has been trying to, to spark up a romantic relationship with this Marquesa the Green because that's what Alan does, right? So um, hit the Irish pub commercial yes, uh, hit my hit my stupid stream deck. So Marquesa the Green is a great little blurb that you can throw in there and it's it's right in uh, I believe this is a slaver's reference. Um, so just wanted to th she appears in that adventure. Um, and then uh, we finish up, and there's a big assault, a uh, big assault in the tower, and a uh, Javka Gernerskir is re is is freed. Marquess of the Green shows up, uh, but all the Furies are dead, and we all seen the carnage that happened in Harby from that point. So, Cantona has some other weird things. Yes, Michelan. Yes, yes, Josh. Absolutely, that's her name. You got it, uh, Jason. You got it, Michelan. Yep. She's referenced in the slavers. That's the only place she's referenced in that one paragraph. Does anyone know what Malenti are, Anna? Nope. Jason? I think I've read it, but it rings a little bell somewhere, but I can't. Guys, if I'm talking too much, let me know, okay? No, Tonight? You no you're doing fine. Okay. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So Malenti are, and this is a, this is a, you would think this is, can't be possible. They're mutated Sahagwin. Sahagwin are ah, mutated to okay, begin because with. Because I, I, that was, I've read, I've read, the word somewhere, but I could remember what the hell yeah. that was. Yeah. So Malenti are they have, Malenti have, are right outside of Kintona as well, ah. and the Sahagwin hunt them because they are, uh, you know, mutated Sahagwin. They're not perfect, yeah. and so there's a core of Malenti out there. So if you want to see base, yes, Mike does absolutely, Mike. So the Malenti are out in that area, and also from a one. There's a lot of these in the right around Kintona. The Aspis are all over the place as well. If you remember, everyone's oh these warrior ants. So that's that's the Aspis, and there are a lot of them in the in the Kintona yeah. ruins area as well and, to utilize. Uh, once again, all in the slavers reference. So pretty neat. Yeah, yeah Kintona is awesome seeker. I, I love yeah. going in there and having. I set percentages as you got closer into that tower that your spells would fail. You know, it was up to like 60, 70 percent for even a high level spell. That's, and that's uh, really it, cool. yeah, yeah, it was neat. It, they had to yeah. rely on wits more than spells. Yeah, and that. So I have only one thing to add. That's I, I added the heraldry for, or or I dis designated some heraldry for for this uh, town of Cantona. Do you have and, it? Uh, well, it's on the five seventy six map. Oh, okay. And, and yeah, and and the heraldry is one of the symbols that was on that we found, or I found on Elmore's picture that is on the cover of the uh, Greyhawk box. And oh, there are cool. some knights, and they had some some one of the symbols that was on the saddle or something like that. And and so I I used that symbol and made made that made a version of that and and kind of tweaked it into a shield that I made into the shield of Cantona. So Oh, that's so, awesome. So, I didn't know yep, that. So, I would have put that up there. Yep. So that's one of the the uh, the little contribution that I took and added. The same thing I took one of the other is uh, symbols that were on the that same image I made into the symbol of Highport. Nice because And they, when we get there down okay. the line there is some additional cool stuff about that. Beautiful. That we can wait until we get there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, because once again, if we have Anna do a, sh a screen share, we're going to pop the entire, uh, we've had that happen before. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, we, we don't want to, we don't want to want to crash anything. Oh, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> so, uh, let's go back and just see if we missed anything in Safeton. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, well, 
There we I, go. I, I mean, Safeton for me is, go for it. is I've done a number of things with Safeton. You know, I, I just loved it since the uh, the first modules, the A modules were dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I've done, uh, you know, taken some, uh, you know, classic ideas and uh, use Safeton as a, a, as a wonderful adventure locale because it's, it is not, um, it's obviously not safe. It's, it's just this, it's a much more wild place and a much more chaotic place than something like Greyhawk mm -hmm. for my, in my campaign. And I've always, I've always loved dealing with Safeton. And um, um, James Ward um, came up with an idea called, uh, from one of the North Texas, he did a little adventure called A Simple Clearing of the Land. And um, I use that to uh, have my players inherit uh, an abandoned manor outside of Safeton. And uh, they, uh, that, that just was a, a tremendous little offshoot uh, on a, a verbonic adventuring that we were doing where the players went uh, beyond the maps for me and I had to come up with something, you know, uh, spur of the moment. And um, it was just wonderful. I mean, uh, you know, I've done Safeton with the uh, the. We, we went yeah. well beyond the thirty second rule there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, yeah, Gaetano. I, I love that Safeton, not safe. But actually, I think if I remember correctly, it was actually Safe Town. That was the name, name originally. The first, that was yeah. shortened to Safeton. Yeah, if sorry, bad bad connection. Go ahead, Jason. Go ahead. Yeah, now you're back again. Good. No, no, I was just saying that one of the things was that the players were, uh, one of the punishments in Safeton is uh, that you have to uh, become sewer cleaners, you know. So, uh, you know, the low-level adventurers yeah. stuffed mm -hmm. having to work into the uh, Safeton sewers. Excellent. And you got all these different um, ideas uh, popping around from the three of us here, and I guarantee a lot of, 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 of out in the audience have, have used them. Um, I want to point out something on this map. I did it intentionally. You see Harby on the map, and look, it's not that far away from what we're where we're talking. So all the Harby ship uh, venturing you can do out of it, running down both sides of the Woolly Bay, you will come across all these, and that's where uh, our my adventure that I showed you was out of Harby because, and that's what's so great about the Wild Coast. You know, you have all these inland. Uh, locations, but you have all these coastal locations as well. So yeah. you can really, you know, you can and, do... And Gygax yeah. and the, the Gord books implied a big animosity between Hardby and Safety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, a very, another very neat area, but let's, um, let's, let me see if I can do this. Without, without, uh, without clicking the, uh, the wrong button, which happens once a show, if you guys all have noticed. Um, so once <laughs> Facts big. that should be it right there okay yep this area needs development all right now let's go to the big map yes this mm -hmm. area needs development okay all right so facts and elrid there is barely anything i know written up about facts all right uh, at all. Uh, it, it, it kind of is really not discussed much in either of these books. A little bit, but not much. Um, a lot about Elrid because it's a slaver uh, port location now. But I mean, this area of the Wild Coast could really use a little love. <laughs> you know? Uh, we'll discuss the things on the map because there's some really cool uh, points. Uh, that are done in the in the slavers reference mostly, and one that's in a tr dungeon magazine, Dungeon Thirteen, which I was so happy when I realized that this was on your map, Anna. So, um, uh, and that's the ruins of Noldare, which is a mm -hmm. great adventure. Yep. So I'm looking through there. Does anything stick out, Jason, in the facts reference you see there? Well, I mean, um, what what I for the most part, this is just one. Yeah. mentions and these are usually like one word things uh, mm -hmm. i am not but you can see it's it's slavers is dun 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 <laughs> that was yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's trying he's trying yeah, he's trying yep so 
until Jason gets back, I'll say this. What I like about this area, yeah. too, if you notice this little tip uh, over on the left, that is Celine. And a lot of those locations are mine that Anna's edited the Pendrel Strait. Lightning Rod Tower, Tim, which is on there, uh, Selmalin Estate and the but Ranger that Hole. That is your campaign map. That's my campaign map. And yes. so yep. it is right. I mean, the Swiss is a dense. That's a long way through. But there's trails that can lead yep. right into the wild coast from that area. And one of the interesting things with, with facts is that the shield with the three diamonds on it is is they're very similar or the, the shield that Gygex, Gary himself used in, in, in various other things. And it's also on the uh, Gary uh, Gygex Memorial Fund, I think uses that as yeah. a version of that as their heraldry. And and, and it's mm -hmm. it's not me who put it there. It's... it's, it's designed as as fax heraldry which to me is kind of an interesting thing but i don't know what gary himself had for connection to 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 fax more than he invented the town but i don't know if mordenkainen was there or, or something so it's kind of a, a little interesting tidbit there that 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 shield a version of that shield is used by connected to gygex himself so to speak jason you okay Oh, I'm, I'm, am I uh, out? Cause uh, you went out for now. You're back, you're back, back, back again. Yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, pulling up some stuff from the index. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yep. Um, yeah. So facts has a lot about it in the index, but I don't know how about how much detail may be mentioned, but I'll say this about facts. So when we first started playing in 1978 um, and we got this, I think when we got this map and we were like, Oh, our, all of our characters first generation were all from facts. They just we just said oh we're gonna make them from facts so a lot of the first generation humans of our campaign come from the wild coast and a lot of the half elves and elves come from Celine and that's why it's such a tight you know that's why we've just developed it for over the forty year period so Jason any uh, anything that sticks out about uh, that facts area before I go into some specifics I'm I'm sorry not for me really okay. you know it's it's not something that I've done I. I was just noting some discrepancy in my index work here. So, so Gatano just points out that the fax heraldry is on the shield of the fighter on the cover of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yep. With their fleet. Yep. Wow. Yep. yep. It's that there is, too. I did so not it's, even... it's one of these shields that gone around quite a bit. So there's something with that shield that is kind of interesting. Yep. That is, wow, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, so that fighter That's a great is from, point. from facts. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Some details in this area. Notice Braxham. Notice Fallowfield. And notice Noldare and uh, and uh, the Elred itself. Okay. This is Braxham himself. Okay. Braxham is a necromancer. That is a skeletal drider with him. This guy's badass. He's almost like Deathmaster level, wandering around. Raising armies of all the undead in the area um, outside of Elred. So was that during humanoid takeover or before? This is this is this is right in Slavers. This guy's active oh, okay. in that yeah. Slavers reference. Yep. Now it's when the when the whole chaos yeah, erupted in the yeah. Wild Coast. Yep. B R A X E M, I believe it is Mac. Yeah. Uh, uh, Braxton. B R A X E M, yeah. and maybe Jason will link him up. He's um got some uh, an army with him and uh so uh, i won't tell you what happened in my ad adventures but uh you know the uh uh one group yeah really uh, uh dealt with him but a great if you want a if you love fighting undead and you love fighting uh this kind of evil um you really got no you got to give him his due you can't just take him out in one shot i think he needs a little little love in there before you know uh, something yeah. to build up to uh, definitely another wonderful uh, Reynolds illustration. Oh my too. God! I, I yeah. just this is my one of my favorite <laughs> black and white artwork of all time. Is this reference? Yeah. Maybe one of one of the reasons why I love this reference so much. But he's cool. Yeah, War ninety nine. And when I uh, uh, real quick, if you haven't heard the story, I met Wayne Reynolds at Gen Con last year, and I went up to him, and we were talking, and I because he does a lot for Pathfinder, he does a lot of the cards in Magic too. He does a lot of it Magic. Really a lot of the most uh, hard covers from Paiso is yeah. uh, I have his art. Great guy, and I asked him. I said to him, Wayne, 
do you have the, are these prints available of all the stuff in the slavers reference particularly marquesa i wanted the marquesa picture especially for carlos i was like I, you know the, the the main one of her um I, 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 how much are they and i'll buy uh, i don't care i want them and he's like sadly they were all destroyed because those kind of prints weren't kept the originals are all gone and i was like oh, i was heartbroken man i, I was looking I, forward to collecting some of that artwork because i love it so much so yeah what a shame all right yeah. so um fallow field is a small town uh north of elrid um oh braxon that's funny mac yeah braxem no nah, man it's just hey, we have the that happens all the time this is this group and look at the level of detail on this picture every character in this adventuring party is on this picture which is even the even the elf's Iron stone above her head is in this yep. picture, which is, which is brilliant. So the dwarf with the staff is a specialty priest of Merlin, and the female above her him is a specialty priestess of Kellanin, and they have their adventuring group, and they are fighting uh, the slavers out of Elrid, out of the town of Fallowfield, which is abandoned. So yep, there it is, Fallowfield. So. There's rangers, there's a mishmash. She's putting together a whole group of hodgepodge of adventurers. This is another cool place maybe to start something and meet this group of adventurers. We have them still to this day in our campaign. I think her name's Fina Finkella, if I recall correctly. And Atanasoff is a specialty piece of Merlin. But if you are a 1E, 2E guy, what that leads to is the following. In the back of my falling apart slavers book, the specialty priest of Kellanin and Merlin is written up for you already. Oh. Not to spell this, but all the abilities I are love in the, the symbols. Yes, are fantastic. In the yeah. back of the slavers reference are the specialty priests. I have of, to look into that. Yep. Yeah, page one twenty seven, one twenty eight. Okay, they're written up for you. And so what I did was I took them and made the spell list off of the spheres here. So. Um, and I love both those both those hero deities, absolutely. So, uh, Jason, um, I know you're not a specialty priest guy, but if the right thing came to you and you liked it, would you, what do you think? Well, it, it, you know, I don't run the game that way. I've yeah. I've always been a one e homebrew. Yep. Or else, um, I'm trying to do five e now, but I've never done the in between, including two e. So. Well. Um, yeah, uh, so Merlin is the star, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's, I was hesitant at first, and then I decided that why my holdup was the dumb thing on why can't a, a priest of Soul and Earth use a bow for an elf, right? Uh, the shedding yeah. blood thing. Once I got past that, it was easy. Yeah, I, I, I understand. That's my thing is that I, I don't run one E with things I think are stupid. And, um, uh, <laughs> and well, you shouldn't run that's any okay, game with whatever that's... you think is stupid. If it's stupid, I, then you change it. Yep. I found alignments to be stupid. So I dropped okay. them. And I, I, um, I believe in a, an ethos for, like, say, paladins and not a okay. alignment. You know, a, alignment. You know, people have different values of good and evil and neutrality, and I, I wasn't going to be dictated to by what the game designer said was one or another. I just didn't like it, so I dropped it. It's fair enough. Uh, so when you have these ridiculous restrictions on clerics, I just thought, well, that's stupid. I dropped it. Um, uh, gaining experience for gold, I thought was stupid. I dropped that. So, oh, I, a hundred thousand percent golden, golden yeah. magic items. Yeah, that's, yeah, my, yeah. There are there are their own rewards. So, um, I dropped a lot of these uh, rule systems. Right. Uh, so when I see something like those, especially priests, sure, but um, they're uh, role playing a choice, not a uh, mechanical choice. Big Tom with a big cheer. Tom, I'm going to save that cheer for Saturday night for the Greyhawk, Living Grail Call Stars because uh, you can't give it to your own adventuring group. So, Jason, you make some great points, and the great thing is is that we can all agree to disagree and mm -hmm. still be friends playing D&D &D and DMing our own ways, right? Which is a great yep. thing. So, so Anna, um, these would fit right in the Pathfinder. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for uh, for you, so definitely. Uh, yep. See, I'm a, I'm an alignment guy, and I like alignment slipping only because I, I like, like a reference too. point. I like a reference yep. point. Uh, yep. uh, you know, and alignment's I, not 100% static. It can flow a yeah. little bit. I also play, kind of have it much more. You can't auto detect like no alignment spells and stuff like that. Wouldn't work. Just tell you like someone is so and so. That that doesn't work that easy for me. It's it in my campaigns. I try to. It's more kind of. But it alignment is certainly there, so to speak. So yeah, it plays. Um, but it's more kind of. It will. It's more like a guide. Who will be your friend and who will you will be your enemy? If you start doing evil things, then evil might start liking you and the good not liking you so much, so to speak. So yeah. that's the, the big thing, so to speak. And then there are real, like, what plain certain and stuff. There are certain creatures that are by nature evil and by nature good. So, yeah. Tim makes a good point. The ever mysterious Tim makes a definitely good point that alignment is necessary for some people to play yeah. role-playing mm -hmm. wise. Yep. Yep. Um, because, you know, they just need a, they need a reference point. And uh, it's a good point. Absolutely. Yep. And, and some don't. Some don't. And so. they open up some interesting mechanics if you want to use them because in right. some campaigns that makes perfect sense and for mm -hmm. others who run their game in a different way it makes mm -hmm. no sense absolutely yep. so um let me think here all right so El elrid is the main slaver port uh yeah there's, there's a little movement alignment we have neutral good with c tendencies we get to that point and then there's slips and all that cold i i agree 100 percent on you with that so this is all uh, done up in the slavers now Elred and the Port of Elred are two different places. You know, according to the, your map too, Anna. Yeah, two different well, yeah, places. yeah, that, yeah. That's the weird thing. I always assumed it was a port city, but yeah, then yeah. I read it's not. They have a port Elred, right? So there must be a reason they didn't. I, I was thinking making it like swampy and difficult in that area, but I was thinking, why do you build a city a bit inland? But it might be you don't want to be attacked from the sea, so that might be one reason. It's um, it has some very interesting characters in it. Uh huh. Uh, okay. These three are, 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 are and I cannot. Uh, okay, so to the left is Rurik, the Taskmaster. Now he's true neutral, and he's a specialty specialized spear fighter. And the kit, if you're two E, the kit's a Myrmidon. You know, just like in the freaking movie with uh, um, uh, Brad Pitt, and when he was playing, uh, what's his name, uh, Troy in that movie, they had Myrmidons, Ooh, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, the next one's Pyera, and she's especially Priestess of the Earth Dragon. And the third is one of my favorite bad guys of all time, Davis the Reaver. And he is a slaver, and he has what's called, he has two, like, he has the Saber of Storms. So he's got, and he's also got a Dagger of Parrying. He's got two really great, unique, magical items. Now, they're all, Rurik's not evil. Rurik was there when Elric got overtaken. He said, oh, I'll just stay here. What, they're going to pay me to train people and, and, and spear technique. Yeah, Achilles. Yeah, thank, I'm getting old, Tim. Uh, my, you know, I'm 53. My son turned 10, so I'm doomed. Uh, so, <laughs> But Pyera is uh, the Earth Dragon priestess in the area. And now this is the first viewing you're seeing of an actual Earth Dragon priestess or priest out in the open and i know a lot of people don't like that sect but if you use it limitedly it's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna injure your campaign um to to a uh, to an extreme i i i'm, I'm okay with it but uh, davis the reaver is great he's on the cover by the way of the slavers that's him on the cover right there ah, that's okay. in the green that's davis the reaver yeah okay mm -hmm. yep all right so they're here in elred and uh all right oh yeah yeah well. yes okay Okay, yep. mm -hmm. I was prepping this, and I'm like, "Oh my God, no dares on the map!" And I was, and then I looked, and I was like, "It's perfectly placed." Anna, do you remember when you put this on your map? And this is 20 years ago, so oh. in for me, yeah, because right. I, I missed it. But I, I read the the damn thing from cover to cover, and this was in the Dungeon Magazine, Dungeon 13. Or? Yes, yeah. So I got it and, and I put it on the map when it came out, basically. So, yeah. Great place. Uh, let me scroll through and get everyone here. This is what you're looking for if you want to get this adventure. Well, I forgot this is high level. everything about it. There so, it is. Yep. Dungeon 13. It mm -hmm. goes way back. The Ruins of Nold there. You want to fight, oh gosh, and I'm not going to say Tiefling, but the Cambion and some dragons and all sorts of there's but a picture tieflings are a form of cambians well i like using the word cambion 
Oh, yeah, me too. That's <laughs> Ray Hawkins. But, but tieflings, in effect, are a form of can they are. cambians. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, cambians and alu demons in our, in our world. But there's the, there's the one sketch, and there's other sketches in the. In the uh, I love this next one. <laughs> Well, that that had great artwork. Yes, uh, I don't know who does. Uh, I can't see who did that. I bet you Christoph would know. It looks like 80, 1988 That was yeah. the ruins so, of. So, can, please, can you just give a, a quick synopsis of of Noldare? Yeah, Noldare to... is uh, is a ruined fortress that uh, was in ruins for a, like a lot, hundreds of years, if I recall correctly, uh -huh. and. Um, the, there's strong magics within still, and I believe the machinations of one of the one of the demon lords is is working out of that almost to develop that as a base area, if I recall. Ooh, okay. And yes, and so he has a, a Cambian uh, basically running the entire area, and I believe. I believe there's a fight, guys. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but two, with two black dragons in it, not one, two. And, uh, now you make now you made me. I want to go back there and and, and look uh, at that place. Uh, I would, Definitely, I, I want yeah, to develop I would look that this for my one own up, campaign. Guys, and uh, and yeah. take a look mm -hmm. at this. And when I saw, you know, yep. this is place. Now you made me yeah. very interested in that place. Uh, here it I is. Need okay. to go back there. Yeah. We ran this ruins of Noldair adventure number one hundred thirty-eight. That's when I ran it in my campaign. So we're talking about right when it came out, nineteen eighty-eight. Roughly in that era. This is Temple of Elemental Evil post era. We had just finished the temple mm -hmm. in 1987. Yeah. So, you know, and hey, we were only to Dungeon 13 back then. Yes. So, yeah, I was was, was the first uh, real big Cambion. I agree yeah, 100% the first on that. Made, made most known one. He's probably not the first one, at least on the main campaign. My campaign, I think there are other Cambions before him, but he's certainly the first one well written about in. in, in in the history of yeah. Greyhawk, definitely. Definitely. So a great mm -hmm. adventure, and I was, like I said, ecstatic yeah. it was on the map. That, I definitely want to go back and, and read that one now. Yeah. Okay, so let's... Um, this area, now the, the, the conjecture is, is this area part of the Pomarge or part of the Wild Coast? Let's just have fun with it, and if someone wants to agree to well, disagree, I, that's okay. Okay, good. I think you get into a very gray area there, uh, considering how the Pomarsh was supposed to be, um, and, the, you know, with borders and such between Wild Coast and Pomarsh, that's a very tenuous thing, I think. Well, yeah, it's such a chaotic area that there are no formal borders, and that's why I didn't put any on my map, because I don't see the, and now the, the, the humanoids have kind of taken over the whole thing, but I think traditionally, it was seen from from uh, the wild coast go from from the 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 western side of the Salint and up with Hardby all the way down to Highport. I, I've always seen that area yes. as, as as the wild coast. That that's the geographical, and then up into the forest, so to speak. So, in the west, this map has got a boatload of edits yeah. on it. So we're gonna show you this uh, broken and, up here. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So here is. You can see I put high port at the top to get as much as I could below it because really above it is a lot of water because the way it, it curves. Yeah. Uh, but um, you have uh, high port, and we did a lot of adventuring early on in high port. Um, and uh, I just still say this is my end of the wild coast. From yeah. this point south of this, you're getting into the area of the Pomarge. Now, if you look on the road south, you see Slaver's Stockade. Guys, that's A1. That's a C that's that's A1, the secret of the Slaver's Stockade, right there. So you have it placed on the map to start your A series if you wish. Um yeah, please, Seeker, send me contact because we're looking to looking to get some more guests on the show, absolutely. And that's, uh that's, go ahead. That's A two, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jason. A two, isn't that Slaver's Stockade? I think it's A one, man. That's A one, isn't it? Is that A2? Yeah, you may be right. That may be A2. You're right. See? My age. I mean, that's that's yeah. Marquesa and everything, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what, I mean, A1. Slave Pits of the Undercity is A1. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's A2. Uh, my bad. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Safeton. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my bad. A1 is in Highport. Yes, thank you. So that's A2. 
and then uh, you go on yeah, from that point. I, but um, Anna has added in all these locations of tribes all throughout um, the maps and added a lot of her own heraldry, I believe, right? A lot of these small yeah, heraldry that, yours? Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. I, that's things that, that I, some of them are, are kind of, in the, 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 the big one there, the hop goblins of the Pomarsh and the goblins of the Pomarsh, they are from the, the original box set. And the other ones are kind of my adaptation from the descriptions and, and just ideas, so to speak. So that's when I ran wild. And also a lot of the locations and, and the, uh, the, the kind of tribe names and, and are, are actually from Joe Block's uh, article, See Pomarge and Die, I think. Is yeah, one See of the, the Pomarge and Die. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and also oh, they, yeah, Joe's, yeah. Part, part of the names and stuff are from his article. And the other one are from uh, a guy, uh, Roger, now I forgot his name, a British guy. He wrote a whole bunch of stuff too. Uh, not Roger Moore, Roger E. Moore, but another Roger that wrote stuff. He sent me a whole bunch of, of his manuscripts. And, and so he sent me the manuscripts for some of the, the Dragon articles and some of the other material that didn't make it into Dragon. So I added that here too, because that was intended to be in published and it never got published. So I added that too. So some of the other stuff is from, from that that material. And, and it's it's really cool. So that's things that that should have been in and now i see there is an error that crept in and that's the town of fenrill have disappeared the tag is there the but name is there but the, the the yeah but the town of uh, the fenrill is is there so now i have to research and jason do you know anything more about fenrill and lost fenrill let me look that up yeah uh, what's what's the spelling on it F -E -N -R -L. Uh, yeah it's uh, yeah f e n r I L L. Very cool. So now I need to research that. I just have that. it as a one mention in slavers. I have a whole bunch of, of I get eight hits. Uh, hang on a second. I get five hits. J uh, Josh says it's been a stumper for him too. Yeah. So, so, so hang on a second. I'm going to. Okay, let me go back to this while we're doing that. Yeah. I'm just finding it in slavers page 87. Yep. Uh, Fenril river. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's the Fenril River. Yeah, that's there. Yeah. The Fenril River is on the map um, going into Floss Fenril. Yeah, and so, um, we'll see here. Hmm. North by Fenril. So, so there is the Sus Road. It's So it's... Uh -huh. So there's uh, no mention of it anywhere, is what you're saying. It's oh, it's, like, it's, it's, it's a Fenril River, but uh, there is a reference. I'm, I'm looking here. Uh, the, okay. the old bridge. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got a whole bunch of text here, so we'll see. Yeah, I yeah, need to do research, like but that thing it needs to to um... dot on the map for me. Okay. No, it's one of these that is not on the maps, but it's mentioned somewhere in the text because I got so many hits. Oh. And I get well, a, a I hit in Dragon it's... eighty four. I get a hit too. So we'll okay, see if cool. that is a oh. false, uh, false or, or something. So we'll see. But it might be the river that or lost Fenrils. So that's the thing. So. Well, see, what I'm seeing on page 87 of Slavers is there's that half map of uh, the Pomarge down there. Right, and right. The yeah, Pomarge, it's and it's just a city and no uh, no verbal mention of it anywhere. Right. Yeah. It's just a dot, right? Yeah, dot on the map. Yeah, Fenril. But that's and, and in a different the, spot yeah, than Lost and, Fenril. Yeah, and Dragon 84 was a false hit. It was a French author, Fenrir, with an E at the end. There was a, a review of, of some book that he or she had written, so that was a false hit. Yeah, I, I, I ran into that. There's um, uh, this guy who, Echo Hawk, who um, he pulled together a whole bunch of um, oh. references that I'd never seen, but it's, a yeah. number of them were false oh. references. I, I got it. It's from a Fenril is a town there on the um, one of the maps that the uh, it's, it's from Living Greyhawk. Okay, you had it. Oh, oh. Yes. oh, it's southwest of the Slaver Stockade on this mm -hmm. on this map. Yep. So. so it's actually at the at the north end of the river. So, but I, the that the rivers okay. don't just end; they get smaller and smaller and become small creeks. So, so it, they actually have a town there on the in the Living Greyhawk. Era, so I Mike says that um, that uh, Lost Fenrir is ancient. Flan Fenrir is new. So yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful. Well, yeah. there, problem solved. 
so on this map, you have um, all the way down, you have the slavers' main locations, which we won't talk about. That's true, Pomarge, uh, Kalen Lako, Suderham. That's all really yeah. we're talking about getting into the Pomarge. I think the Pomarge des deserves an entire show on its own. It does. It definitely does. Yeah. And so um, I may do that in two weeks and tie in uh, what's going on on my bo um, uh, with the Pacific York border that I have and talk about uh, talk about that uh, for published source and my campaign too. That may be a good one. But High Port itself is um, pre-wars, Tim and I did a lot of one-on-one -on -one adventuring here. And here's the map that comes uh, for Highport out of the slavers reference. So it's kind of uh, shows you districts. So it's a good starting point. At least you have some of the, uh, some of the districts yeah. here. Now, I, I, the we had a major antithesis of our campaign that Tim hates, if you're still on there, Tim, with a passion come out of Highport. So in the old beginning Cavalier days, um, at, when Tim was playing Skeev the Magnificent, yes, City of Adventure, Intrigue, and Nastiness, uh, Tim's character Skeev uh, came across a lady who would visit him, and he had to, his front was a bread shop in Highport. And he was setting up a thieves guild in Highport, and a lady would visit him every morning and buy bread from him. And her name was Lady Valencia Page. Turns out she was the soon-to-be ex-wife of Lord Page. Lord Page's symbol in my... I guess she... Oh, you know what? I gotta get Brian to make up that heraldry. It's a it's a bloodied lightning bolt running across. I gotta get him to make that heraldry up for Lord Page. That would be cool. Lord Page is like a, a high-level ca uh, cavalier with a, a one of the final word longswords, back talker, the chaotic neutral one. So, uh, Skeev messed with him once. Once. And, and doesn't like to mess with him again. So Lord Page is a—I think I have him at 16th level Cavalier. He's just all that's one of you, from your campaign. It's right? one from my campaigns. Yes, awesome. but yeah. Skeev ended up marrying his ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. So Valen Valencia Page and Skeev are together now, and all is wonderful in the world. Um, uh, I had Led Zeppelin on the brain. I think I named him after Jimmy Page there, Jason. So, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. But, um, yeah, those were the days in high, our high port adventuring. It was setting up the, a thieves' guild in high port. And it was it was fun one-on-one -on -one adventuring. This is well before all this publications came out. Well before From the Ashes. Even before the Free City Ground box set was out. So, so you saw high port as just one of the cities along the wild coast, not completely oh, yeah. overrun by humanoids? So. It, was, it was teetering. And it had uh -huh. a Slaver yep. element because mm -hmm. of the A series, yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, and the, yeah, so the good old days of Highport, the good yep. old days of Highport, and that's what yep. we did a lot of venturing, and that's why I had yep. to pay special homage into. And there's a picture right from the back cover of A one. Had to pay it homage because it's, I once again I don't like when they go. I like Pascarell, and I like all these other towns that are like iffy. You know, I don't like this set in stone. This is how it is now, and you can't do anything about it. I no, like no, those. You, ha you have to do things about it. That's that's yeah. what adventuring is all about. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, that gets back to me for like the the Horn Society. How um, it was so diverse in its way mm -hmm. that I liked it so much better yeah. than it was. And um, yeah, I'm I'm hell bent on bringing them back in my campaign. Yes, yes, definitely. I'm hell bent on it. Yeah, one way or the other, it's they're coming back. Yeah, high court uh, and blue or human. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Cold, hundred uh, percent. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was multiple thieves. We had three thieves guilds running in in there. And, oh, and it was wow, fun. that's it was... that's an interesting uh, struggle and and competition and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but then eventually. Um, uh, that's where, by the way, uh, the major campaign arc of Lord Jarius to depose the Cavalier Thief that Sam had, uh, he came to like join, have an adjunct thieves guild and he abandoned him. That's where, that's where the, uh, he comes from is Highport. And he's now the guild master in Altamira seeking revenge on Sam, the, the halfling. And that's a whole campaign arc story we have. Now this picture here is one of the Marquesas. This is Marquesa the Gold. So Marquesa the Gold likes putting gold war paint on her face. And she's the most closest looking Marquesa double to the actual Marquesa. So her nickname, they call her Tanva. Um, very nasty character. And as you go further south, you get higher and higher level Marquesa doubles. So, yeah, absolutely in the reference. That is, that's, yeah, yes. and, and we need to have Carlos on here one day so he can. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Just more on on Marquesa lore here. That's cold, really awesome. 
Cole, I don't do I don't do Scarlet Brotherhood anywhere on the Western map, and Greyhawk Mike agrees with me on that. They may have agents, but like Sea Princes weren't ever taken by them. I just don't do that. Uh, I don't like how intrusive they had become into into the societies. It's just it was just my design choice. A lot of other people may want to do it differently. But I know that uh, I know that uh, Mike Bridges and I were on yeah, the I same page. Yeah, uh, I haven't been that. I haven't kind of uh, toned them down that much, but I've definitely toned them down. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm not a. I I always done Scarlet Brotherhood, but very sub Rosa. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 supposed to be you know never seen. You know. So well, in they're my, out there in the wild now. So so they're running things, which means that they they get enemies and and stuff. So yeah. So one of the great things you can do everyone knows as a DM is you have the right to change the the story. Uh, as long as your players like the stories you tell, then you're good, you know? And so I just, you got to get to a point. Yeah. Until yeah, you have to recruit the players into changing the story with you to weave a new story, meaning to Absolutely. move the story forward. That's how I see it. I want the players to come in with using their characters to weave new chapters in the book, so to speak. I agree a hundred percent. And yeah. uh, if we do the Pomarge in two weeks, you'll see that what happened in my campaign in, in the Principality of Ulick saved what happened in the Living Greyhawk Principality of Ulick. I mean, it's just the way, it, you know, it's just, yeah. we did something about it. Here, yeah. this pick's funny. So you see there's an Olafid Mind Flayer in the background. Yeah. This is the House of Quiet in Highport. And, oh. and he the, the Olafid runs it, and his name is Quiet. So I, uh, you can talk in here, but yeah, it's just, you don't want to do anything. You don't want your brain eaten or being served on a platter <laughs> here. So, uh, yeah, one of the neat little things about Highport and the Slavers reference is uh, these kind of town locations they have. So um, I thought that was neat. Yeah, um, a lot of good points, both from Will. Uh, it's only canon until the dice starts rolling. That's perfectly. And also Phantom NJ. Sooner or later, there comes a point when the old building of influence and power comes to an end. That's very true. Yeah, and, and you have to... Oh, I've talked about this. You have to campaign arc things. You have to throw, you can't yeah. just go, uh, once again, Anna, Anna, you're always right with this. You can't just go like this. And 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 when you're ninth level, start fighting like the, the lords of the town. No, you have take to over save the, yeah. yeah. And, and also the, the big high and mighty, if they've been around for power for a thousand years or like gone into godhood, not they will not be easily brought down, so to speak. So you have to have a yeah. lot of layers in between to, to kill off pesky characters before they, they get close. Yeah. And and the fun that I've always had in a campaign is that that beginning and middle level. And um, mm -hmm. when we're getting into the higher level, that's when my enjoyment as a DM starts to wane. Uh, yeah. So uh, most of what I'm geared to for campaigning is a very low and mid-level, low high level campaign. And that's it. That's it for me. So I don't really get involved in a lot of the movers and shakers. So something like the wild coast, which is just this open area is, is, it is perfect for the mid-level game. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a little rough on low level, but it's perfect for the mid-level stuff. There are some areas, though. You can keep them away from some of the major nasty stuff. There's always orcs and humanoids to fight, right? You know, just... Well, that's, that's kind of what I did with Safeton, was mm -hmm. that my low-level characters, that the lower-level players where um, they were moving east out of the area and I could not st stop them. So I started getting them involved in some things going on in safety. But otherwise, the area would really have bumped them off pretty quickly. It's just they lost interest in Homlet. Well, that can happen when, and we all have done this. It's so well developed, Homlet, that you overuse it. We all do. I've overused yeah. it. That was a long time ago for me. Yeah, Same. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Hamlet is a campaign setting. You know, it's that simple. And uh, but these are campaign settings that we showed so far. Narwhals. I can't wait. I can't wait till we do Narwhal adventuring, and it's all. It's going to be a, a little different. You know, the campaign is going to go off from the Knights of Yulik a little bit onto a little more different ethos. You know, it, I can't wait to tr try it out. Definitely. So. Um, yeah, well, well, you ha um, have a good one, man. So, um, but, but, am I running puppets? Josh, never in a million years am I running puppets. 
just kidding. I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my world, Jason's world, Anna's world is not necessarily the right world. This is in Earth Journal 32 as well. I wanted to give it really cool mention because it's a great article. It's by our friend, the map maker, Aaron Froke. Okay. And it's called History of the Wild Coast Region and Alternate Timeline, Temple Wars to Present. Dates stamped in here, what happens in his campaign. And I agree, Skag, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, this is a really great read as well. And it's I think it's right before my article. So give it a shot if you're looking at some other w development ways you want to go with your Wild Coast. And that's why I have that in there, uh, just to show you um, there's other different uh terminal you know different direction you can take so um what questions do we have about what we've shown so far and we just scratched the surface most of the stuff was great reference from anna's maps but um there's a lot of things that are not uh that and i guarantee you there's some probably some cool things that i forgot about and missed um, oh, yeah there's this is a it's a lot. lot cool, yep. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Um, I'll say this. So Norwell um, has a ba Baron Janston is a 10th level. I, I upped him to a 10th level thief. And Ruberish Nenshin, brother of Org Nenshin, is kind of like a co-ruler. He's a dual class thief fighter. 3rd level thief, 11th level fighter. So there's actually, you know, Org Nenshin's brother in, and that's something I missed to discuss earlier. So let's see here. I, the key to do is find a starting point that you can develop and call your own. And uh, and that is kind of what we have done here with this, like for, for Norwell, we started on this. And that is this, this whole upper area of the map. I can get that on the table. It's not that much. It's not that big. I have the Norwell Headhunters. I'll have Trevin's Hall. I'll have all these places that are reference. There's, there's an inn. There's, you know, there's the, the Teamsters the, for, for moving, you know, uh, uh, caravans and stuff uh so that's kind of my idea for setting w where i have and a lot of that came from the published source norwell article uh some of it's my own creation that was kind of the idea behind how to get um a starting point in, in norwell and i'm working with the headhunters plus i love blade storm so much i want to utilize her a lot more so uh that was my idea for a new location so so jason you you go back to safety if you were to start again in the in the uh Walk well, I, I, I've developed part of it for, for mm -hmm. our earlier campaign, but that's dec you know, oh, maybe two decades ago. Um, I did develop a, a little thing. Um, 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 I was working on posting it on my blog as this tower, uh, an old tower. And um, again, I'd run a thing that's a, a Cthulhu Hawk game mm -hmm. um, where there's a lot of mythos in my campaign. Now, a lot of that goes back to salt marsh but also to uh the wild coast and so uh like the city of uh Safeton has its mythos element and outside of it i have this old tower uh that is um older than the uh, elves and it has been inhabited many and many a time and one of the things is that uh every so often everybody uh it's always re-inhabited and uh, some wizard, some of that takes it over. And at some point in its history, everybody disappears that's in it. And um, it's recurred again and again over the thousands of year history. And uh, so they don't know when or where it's going to happen. So it's always been an element of my wild coast. Cool. Very cool. I love I love your take on on things, man. It just is dark, <laughs> <laughs> dark and dangerous. Which uh, well, okay. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. So, Anna, if you had to start something from scratch, campaign wise, where would you go in the Wild Coast? What what would really tickle your fancy there? Uh, I would probably start in Hardby. Okay. Uh, it depends. It depends. If I want to start, uh, kind of uh, establish uh, characters that have a class and mm -hmm. and go on a mission, I will probably start in Hardby. 
or or or, or Norwell maybe or safety. But I will probably start in hard B and then figure out they they're working okay. for someone and then go and and start dealing with some of the troublemakers. That's one one way of doing it. And maybe even in the city of Greyhawk, just to get a, somewhere to 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 kind of go ease into it but i will also start if i will start with like zero level or or characters that start from nothing then i will probably start them in in narvel or safeton just as a gritty grow up so to speak and they need to basically start fighting their way out of it because it's it's not the place you want to stay in once you you grow powerful so to speak that's the the um, and then simply let the characters pick whoever they want to work for as a way of, of gaining their, their ranks and, and, and getting a class and, and learning things. So I would, I, I would simply give them a lot of options and who they want to, to, to kind of to teach them, to train them and who they will work for. So, so that's one of my tricks that I usually do in, in a lot of the low, I want to start them out low level, meaning no class. And, and they basically have to start figuring out what to do and, and, and where to, to put their emphasis on, so to speak. They want to be just local thugs and, and join with the little local, uh, whatever, hoodlum runs the neighborhood, so to speak, or they can go on and, and, and chance it and find someone else to, to fight for. And in, in Northern Wild Coast, there is plenty from evil ones that are kind of evil in method, but maybe not in end goals that much. They're more selfish than, than overly evil. And then there are other good guys around and, and there's like real forces you can, you can join. So, so that is an interesting area from that way. And then you also have the Elven influence that I think we haven't talked much about it, but to me, it's one thing that is meaning Selene and the Elves are only a stone throw away from, from the Wild Coast. So they are always kind of messing about slightly and, and in there, so to speak. So, yeah. And uh, have you decided if you're going Pathfinder 2 yet? Uh, yes, I will. Okay. I will definitely run the uh, Pathfinder Two campaign and see how that turns out with that rule set. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I was going to say, you know, we haven't talked about the elves, but mm -hmm. we also haven't looked at that. The Wild Coast is a seafaring campaign. Start. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would say yeah. that. Um, yeah. I, I don't look at it as a piratical thing, but more because of the slavers as a um, a kind of merchant. You know. Um, uh, that, that there is there's this element to it, but it's not like your some areas uh, really hearken toward a more pirate kind of campaign. But I always thought that the the the, the Safeton, they're not quite pirates. They're more oh uh, uh, they're, they're with the whole slavers business privateers. Yeah, well, <laughs> not even quite that. But but I would say that. Um, I, the way I view it is that it, you would have more order, but a lot of evil. Okay. Whereas a pirate campaign, you might have less evil, but more chaos. So I would see High Port and Safety as very nautically evil with a lot of evil elements, but much more um, of evil merchants. And then you would have them just out and out evil pirates. Or that's just how I kind of see it. But, yeah. Um, that's my version. And that you can't, you look at all these cities on the wild coast, and of course it's a coast. Yeah. All of these have to be naval cities. You know, they always have to have some kind of naval or trade, um, you know, right there, straight down the map. I agree. And once again, I need to do, and I've been to, probably you've done two of them, but one, uh, we need to do Harby again <laughs> to, to tie this all in because it all goes yeah. right out of Harby. You know, we really, that's uh, maybe because we have Harby so many Harby has viewers. a whole eastern side yes. to the Wild Coast that is interesting in itself with the Cairns and, and the Ghost Tower Inverness is right there yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the, there's a whole bunch of stuff yeah. on the eastern side of Woolly Bay that, that, deserves a discussion by itself that is not normally part of what you see as the wild coast but it's almost as yeah. wild and in some ways maybe even wilder than the wild coast so it's it's one of these interesting kind of near adventuring areas near greyhawk that is kind of wild and 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 frontier like but yeah. hardby itself i've always seen as orderly and yes know, me too yeah it's one of the 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 kind of civil beacons of civilization yes. really that. I don't see yeah. it that way at all. 
I, I see it as part of it, the ginarchy and stuff. I see them as, as part of the good guys, so to speak. And oh, I definitely. See them as, yeah. yeah. The yeah. good guys, but I mean, yeah. I, I guess you got to read, uh, well, Jason, there's bad read the elements slavers in reference. Every city. Yeah, there's bad <laughs> elements in every city, but I, and I see hard B as, as part of the, the good guys, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. You know, with with, the, with their um, their Marines, their, their uh, Amazon yep. warriors. Yeah. That part of, um, of bringing okay. order. If if you live and try to make a decent, uh, honest living in the area, I think you you will see hard B as on your side, so to speak. Oh, uh, most of hard B. Uh, yeah. Yes, because there's a lot of Mayhem worshippers there, and uh, exactly, oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, yeah. But there's a yeah. there's an evil element creeping oh, up. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah, well, definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a little spice everywhere in Greyhawk. Yeah, true, true, absolutely, definitely. So if I were to when I, when we start Narwhal, we are going to visit Pascarell. We're going to visit Wyvern, and which aren't that far. We're gonna we we may uh, have a, a skirmish with Mistrine's troops on like uh, you know lower level guys and stuff, and work our way up. I can't wait for that. I think it's going to be a coolly fantastic, little different than the the Order of Yule campaigns that we have. Harby's the same way too. Barely any of the characters that are in Harby have anything to do with the Order of Yulik at all. Now, the Greyhawks one's different, but the, but Harby's got its own thing going on. So, oh, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I, in my oh, campaign. And I, I, that's one of the things I reject is the the, the, the whole post-wars Harby business. I just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not a post-war Greyhawk Wars, but I do not like what they did at all with, with Harby and stuff, so. Uh, I, I agree, and I tend to ignore a lot. I have some Greyhawk presence in there with ship-wise, but not overtaking the whole city, because then it, it ruins the whole fighting going on in the Harby City itself for power, you know? So, um, but then again, uh, there's there's so many options. And I'm glad you got the slavers, Jason, because I think you're going to like the read on it. I really do. Oh, well, yeah. it's not like I haven't read it. I've read everything yeah. two or three times through. It's cool. just, that was 20 years ago for the most part. Yeah, maybe I can uh, give you uh, give you a little bit of a different uh, uh, <laughs> viewpoint on it because like I said, it's one of my favorites. So I know, uh, I know. I'll <laughs> give it. A yeah, absolutely. So, guys, any other questions? We're going to do uh, some announcements here. Uh, overtaking the city is harder to do than it briefs. Well, well, Tim. Um, see, Tim wouldn't know about Harby that much because his two characters, if you guys remember, in the one fight in Harby, right on the docks, he fled. Do you remember that? Midway through the adventure, both his characters say, you know what, uh, the, the, the children of Skeev, actually, they like, I've had enough of this, and they just left. So, because Tim wasn't playing the second week, so he just said they're going to go somewhere else. So, pretty funny. Um, let me see if we got any questions here. You got Jason to think about it. See, mission accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is saying something, to have Jason think about something. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. But um, I, what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to definitely continue on a lot of regions that I know a lot about of and we all know a lot about of uh, that are referenced in the campaign and just talk about them. I think there will be some good discussions coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, but we'll talk about that during announcements. So, um, all right. Um, why don't we – it's 9.15. Anna, why don't we uh, – what is going on? Because we're going to have a... Wait a minute. Do you think the social collapse point system from Night Below could be used to take out some of the bad factions in the area? Uh, um, who's going to answer that? Jason? You're a Night Below guy. Uh, I am, but not not um, Big, not that aspect of it. And no. why is that? Um, if you could answer that. Oh, well, well. I, I, any, any kind of rule system that I find um, that is like either forcing... Um, uh, mechanical actions on role playing or um, set actions on my DMing, I, I just tend to just shy away from. Okay. Okay. So you don't wouldn't really like that system. Do you like it in Night Below? No, I I, I don't. I mean, okay. I I don't use that kind of thing at all in my DMing. So. Fair point. I'm glad you answered that because I have never. Uh, really even looked at it, so I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, I haven't matters. looked at that okay. system in Night Below, but I have several kind of notorious, uh, kind of you get you can get uh, like influence points 
that's something that was in in Pathfinder one. I think that was some sort of influence back even in in three point five and and in PF two. There is also you you can in, you gain like positive or negative influence points in in all the factions around as soon as they start noticing you for the good and bad. And I use that as a kind of thermometer that you can how different factions in my campaign will deal with the characters and they either help them or, or, or hinder them, so to speak. So rake up enough notoriety and, and, and that you become infamous and, and the factions start hating you, they will start come out and trying to, to set put men to your, your dealings. Or they if you ask for help, if you if you good standing, then you might receive help more easily. So so I so I have a, a system for that. Yeah. But it's not really a, a social um, points in that way but it's an interaction point so so i can remember the standing for certain characters or the whole group of characters for all the different different factions yeah once uh, often i don't tell the players what they have what their ranks are no so uh one more thing the a series is up and it's an old series it starts in high port and goes through the palmarge and, and different areas uh there's an a zero out that was a fourth edition adventure um that starts no, like no. It's first edition, I thought. No, nah, it's fourth. A zero's fourth. Yeah, A zero was fourth. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was I fourth. It, it may have been yeah. re-released. Someone may have redone it as first, but it's fourth edition. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you can change it back, of course. But yeah, um, A zero is um, a little lower level. If you want to go through the A series, you can do it. Uh, you still gotta connect some more some more dots here. Uh, going from A zero to A one, it's a it's a jump, I think. A zero is first edition. It was released in the reprint A one for book during the first reprint. So I am incorrect, and Mike Wilson just made me look like a fool. And uh, Mike, you thank you uh, for 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 I I appreciate that. I thought it was fourth edition. So awesome. It was released in the reprint. I thought it was separate. Did someone do it as a separate print in A uh, A zero? Yeah, it's it's something. Yeah, they, it came as some sort of reprint because I remember I Mike, thanks, I read man. it through. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. There's it was a something hard, weird. Yeah, there's a hardcover slavers reprint, and uh, it's A zero through four. And I was pretty sure it was a um, a one e um, version. I apologize because I have it a separate. And because I, I don't have it in the hardback uh, reprint, and that's probably why. Because is uh, that where Dark Shelf? Danger came Dark from? Shelf Quarry. Yeah. 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 Exactly, because yeah. that was a, f I think, fourth edition weird thing that. That's came what out. I thought, but yeah. I could, like I said, someone may have written it for fourth just because they were playing it at fourth. So yeah, I don't uh, know. Yeah. Mike is Mike is always right. I mean, Mike Mike's dead on like Jason is. So I should have yeah. not questioned it. <laughs> yeah. so, so I remember I had to add, add Dark Shelf and a little awesome. river there. The, Pelura River. There, yeah. I had to add that afterwards because. Oh, of that okay. Adventure. So yeah. Very, very cool. And it was like the Ghost of Salt Marsh. You needed a revision of the map just to <laughs> get it right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Mike. I know the feeling about the, asking the wife on that too. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. So um, I hope you guys like this discussion because we're going to keep up with uh, a lot of this. Yeah, we're throwing a little campaign aspect here and there, but really getting into some ideas. Because uh, I know we have a lot of player uh, uh, people out there who are really getting interested. Yeah, see, Cole, Cole doesn't even know about it. So uh, uh, link, check uh, check um, Celestian's link, Cole, up up there uh, for A zero, a Danger Dark Shelf Quarry. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. See uh, that discussion alone educated someone on what's available. Uh, we have a lot of um, wonderful things coming up, and uh, so uh, why don't we start with uh, Anna? Why don't you start off? What's going on? Uh, I just posted just <clears throat> the minute before we went live. I posted on my Patreon the revision, first revision of the uh, uh, 576 map. So, uh, but now we, I need to add two more things, two changes to it that that we came up during the show. So they will be added to the final version. But there's a whole bunch of <clears throat> of stuff that I've changed. It's about 15 things or something like that <clears throat> that I changed and it was that I wanted the new atlas to be because there, since I knew there was a number of things that needed to be fixed so I fixed them before so so that one is available if you go to my patron anyone even if you're not patron member because <clears throat> all my posts during the COVID 
kind of disaster that is spreading around the world, the pandemic. So while this goes on, I will all my Patreon posts will be open for everyone. So, so it's there and you can download and look at it and tell me if there's something that needs to be fixed. And there's a list of the changes out there too. So hang on a second, I can. And uh, guys, not to brag, but um, my location that Carlos Lacing and I did for our joint adventure, Horror in the Hools, Dun yes. Mounds, mm -hmm. is on, on the there. map. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yep. very much, Anna. Oh, you're welcome. That's I awesome it. to put content like that that yeah. comes from cool adventures. So, that yeah. Jason ran in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Dun Mounds are on the map, Jason. So there you go. Yep. So. <laughs> and, and another cool location that is on the map is the city of Fleeth. Ooh. Anyone remember where that came from? I don't know. Do you know, that's Jason? The, the, that's the city I... that was uh, one of the big cities in the uh, old uh, Keelan or Sheldamar kingdom that, that – um, uh, Vecna conquered and oh. and, and he uh, had a siege and stuff like that and and there was a reference saying it was just near uh, the uh, Rushmore or sorry the um, hang on a second here I need to go here the the, uh, the yeah the Rushmores and I realized that there is a strategic gap east of the Rushmores between the Lorth Mills and the Rushmores. There is like that narrow gap that is about fifty miles wide. If you control that, you control who goes. The north and south. Oh, cool. So I realize that's the strategic location and it's near the Rushmores. So I put Fleeth in a forest hidden there as a ruin and that's the city of Fleeth. Mike says ancient flan again. Great. Yep. So so that is, is uh, one of the, the cool locations that is there. And um, doo -doo -doo, then there is uh, the uh, a bunch of rivers are added. As the Grey Run River, that is the little river that runs into the Greyhawk City, that is from the Gorda books. That one is there now. It's not named, unfortunately, because there's so many things, but the river itself is there. So, so, um, and then the um, there's some other that uh, things that people have pointed out that was wrong. The border between. Um, uh, Grey, uh, Greyhawk and Duchy of Ernst are now adjusted because in the uh, from the ashes there is a notation saying that 584 they shifted the borders in an agreement so that means that before 584 a lot of the area that is now the uh -huh. became part of Greyhawk was actually part Duchy of Ernst uh, Greysmere and the mines and stuff like that oh, because cool. it's actually mentioned in 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 from the ashes that in 584 it shifted and Grey Greyhawk, in an agreement with Ernst, took over that area. So that was some of the, the cool little findings. So there's a bunch of stuff like that that, that I needed to, to change. So that map, you can download it now and look at it. And <clears throat> Pascorel will be upgraded to a town and Fenril will get a town symbol that will be added in the final Beautiful. release as well. And then next week, the first of the Atlas pages will be out too. Because as soon as I have this done, I will. Uh, they will come out as a JPEG only, the revision to, to as now, and then I will start making the atlas page. And when the atlas is done, then that might either be a new revision if we come up with more stuff, or it will. I will hopefully make it into PDFs and a whole bunch of other stuff eventually. But it will go on the online map, and you can download it as a JPEG. And then there's a whole bunch of other cool things. I'm uh, working on um, Lendor Isle map in Gaia and stuff. And it's only early, but it looks damn promising. So we can see that eventually there will be a, a map of Lendor Isles that will be awesome. Definitely awesome. And there will be some screenshots and stuff coming of that fairly soon. And yeah, so so there is a bunch of other, but that was the, the big news that, that the first revision is out, the release candidate for the first revision on the 576 map, and that the Atlas work is commencing on Monday with the first pages. Yeah. So we're going to talk uh, an announcement. So there'll be an announcement, then we're going to have a little discussion on a guy. So please stay on because I want to get some input. And that means guys like Skagith and a lot of uh, Mac and a lot of other people. Just please, because uh, I want to talk to everyone about something that's serious. So uh, hang in there, okay? All right. And Anna, too, she knows what it is. So uh, we really want to get some feedback. Okay. Uh, Jason, what do you got going on? 
Well, I've been uh, working on a gazetteer, uh, is similar to the Mastara gazetteers like Dwarves of Rock, Home and such. Um, and it's for uh, Blackmore, and it's my uh, version of it called Blackmore Land of a Thousand Witches. And um, I'm uh, just at the beginning, I'm writing it up, and I'm following the structure of the old gazetteers. Now, recently, I did an index of uh, Dungeon Magazine 148. And that has Gary Holly and Spine Castle adventure nice. and write up. Now Gary is very involved in uh, uh, do, redoing the map and doing more with Spine Castle, and that has distracted me a little. And I'm currently putting out a uh, of, um, a listing of, of of NPCs of of a necromancer and his uh, journeyman and apprentices uh, in Spine Castle and. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, Spine Castle up in the Bone March is an incredibly rich uh, city. Uh, you, you've got to get a hold of Dungeon 148, see what Gary's done with that city. It's a wonderful place for mid to high level adventuring. And I would just say it has really inspired me to uh, want to take a hand in there and as a DM to want to get some players poking around in that city. And we may have a little minor announcement on that, too. So there's a lot going on. A lot of great stuff. Jason, um, I know you're. it's good to be busy, right, with Greyhawk. I mean, it really sure. is. It's, 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 been, uh, it's been great. Um, anything else you'd like to uh, talk about, Jason? Well, right now I'm always uh, doing various projects, but that's – that's two of the things that I'm really focused on is doing a, a Blackmore Land of Black Ice and um, developing that as a full gazetteer, 64 page plus, and then um, just fooling around with what's going on in Spine Castle. I also, with my blog, whatever sweeps by or occurs to me, um, I run a um, Facebook group called Earth Abides and uh, currently, I'm I'm trying to get feedback on uh, um, the earthly, our art, the castles that exist on our earth. Um, using them, the the photos of them as uh, where would you place them on uh, our fantasy Greyhawk campaign? I saw that um, in the Cannon Fire, right? And that was pretty yeah. cool. That was pretty cool. Well, it, 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 that's actually just on my Facebook Earth above. Oh, is it? Oh, you're linking to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm mentioning it. I, I don't all think right. I've... But. There's so much going on, man. It's tough to keep track of it all, man. For, uh, so, uh, th Well, it, if you go to my blog, up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a link to the Facebook group Earth Abide. So you Very can cool. always follow it from there. Very cool. Yeah, it's a fairly new group, and a lot of us on here are members of it. So uh, it's uh, pure Greyhawk discussion on that on that one as well. Definitely. All right. Let's start with what's going on on this channel. This, you know, Sunday ends the week. So next week, we go right into some hard, uh, some really cool stuff. So we got uh, our next Legends and Lore um, Wednesday night with Anna, Mike, and me. Mm -hmm. We're going to do an era. We're going to do From the Ashes. So we're going to talk about the wars. This is going to be a Greyhawk Wars discussion. Uh, so we're going to talk about all the modules and the thing, uh, things that came out during this time. I is the evil Mark lands. Um, you know, there's, there's some really cool, uh, things, Mike, I'm going to rely on you on the Vatoon stuff, man. So <laughs> hopefully you got that covered, Mike, but, uh, uh, we'll talk about that and we'll, 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 we'll go into in depth, um, a lot of the published source references and what happens, uh, in this, uh, yeah, in this, uh, era of, uh, of Greyhawk, which would be considered the Sergeant era, uh, Jason, correct? Mostly Carl Sergeant, uh, in this uh, well, time all, well, FTA is just all Sergeant, so. Yeah, so it's going to be. And, a, I mean, you know, that the city of Greyhawk is, the box set is Sergeant, so. It is, it is, but it's got a, uh, and you can see a little bit of it because it talks about in that uh, box set that the Horn Society is basically taking over most of the shield lands. I'm like, where did this come from? It doesn't, you know what I mean? Out of the blue, it's in there. It's yeah. like, there, yeah, there's no war. I, don't, I didn't recall any war happening, you know, but I just ignored that stuff. So, yes. 
Uh, my of it too may be heretical, but uh, that's okay, Mike. It's better than not having any discussion at all on it. So I know the five shall be one ties into it a little bit, correct? That adventure. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to this discussion and uh, we'll just keep on uh, bringing out some, uh, you know, as much content as we can to get it out to everyone. Thursday night, we continue with uh, On the Trail and uh, we had Dwarf fighting Dwarf Thursday night, which is a rarity uh, in any kind of uh, campaign. Uh, so we had the Prince's Highwaymen, which is a group of uh, legalized bandits, basically, um, and the uh, and the huntsmen uh, out of Altamira fighting each other. Right, in, you know, it was pretty crazy stuff. So we'll see. They're on the they're on the trail of the flower. This uh, bounty hunter named Lafleur, and uh, they need to get this information that Lafleur has stolen from the, uh, has ripped from the Altamira Bounty Hunters Guild. It's, and we'll see what where it happens here. This continues on Thursday night. All right, now Saturday night, I get to kill people. Just kidding. <laughs> Saturday Can't night is Greyhawk All Stars Living Greyhawk All Stars night, and we have. Uh, Six players now. All right. I, I forget Andy's last name. Joe Selby, Casey Brown, Vernon Vincent, uh, Susan Threadgill, Ron Lundeen, and Andy. Oh, my, my brain just went off. And you ready for this? I'm going to post some pics of this group. They're three freaking halflings out of six. They have three halflings in their group. They have no mage in their group. It's, they, these guys are insane. These guys are, uh, this living Greyhawk people are nuts. So, uh, up against the mongrels of the putrid tongue. So, <laughs> yeah, three halflings, a human, a half orc, two humans, a half orc, and three halflings. What a mess. Uh, for But uh, it'll be fun. Right out of Greyhawk, and then off we go to Diamond Lake, uh, one of my favorite locales out in the Cairn Hills. So, uh, yes, you pity the mongrels, Gitano. You never know. The, um, we may see a special appearance from the ever mysterious Tim that night too, as well to scare the shit out of him. So uh, I'm going to work on that with Tim. Um, Tell him to bring the drum. Uh, well, he's going to bring the tongue tools, I think. A little, maybe the drum too. But uh, yeah, that'll be uh, that will be uh, Saturday night on our Saturday night special. But uh, we're trying to get every once a month. I'm trying to do something with Greyhawk uh, personalities, and that's this month's Living Greyhawk adventure. All right, Sunday night next week is a kind of a special Gabin. It's going to be very specialized for a lot of you. I think you may get something out of this, though. Gabin 92, beginning with miniatures and terrain. So I'm going to have Bill Sashar score and Builder Master Crafter on and DM Brian Sublime, my 3D printer guy, on. And we're going to talk about how to do stuff on a budget if you want to play a tabletop terrain minis game. Uh, and some of the tricks that Bill uses to make stuff out of household items. Um... I think that'll be a cool thing too. And uh, so that'll be next Sunday's uh, Gabin um, as we uh, delve into that topic. All right. So we had our initial meeting. I don't know if a lot of you know about this, but we are going to, I like to challenge myself constantly. I don't know if I've bitten off more than I can chew, but we are going to, with enough participation, this is where I need streamers. I need we need assistance. We are going to have a virtual Greyhawk Con, okay, for a weekend, and we are yes, virtual Greyhawk Con. All right, the tentative date is the first weekend in October. Let's so figure looking October second, third, and fourth. Uh, Christoph is away all weekend, or he's going to be working on the logo for this. So. Um, Yes, it's not Virtual Gary Con, Virtual Greyhawk Con. And if they, if someone comes to me and says I can't name it that, too bad. What are they going to do to me? Are they going to put me in shackles? <laughs> right, Anna? What do you think? We'll, we'll give it a shot. Greyhawk Online and a whole bunch of other stuff that are named Greyhawk and they're kind of fan yeah. making fan stuff. So, yeah. Hopefully. We have yep. mm -hmm. five months to put this together. So, I have yep. six commitments. I have commitments from me, myself, Anna, Will. Uh, from Wicked Studios LLC, Zarathon, Josh Pop, okay, Blue Box RPG, and Icarus Kristoff, okay, we need, good, good, we need commitments, so this is what I need, I need 
Even if you're not a regular Greyhawk streamer, I need some streaming channels. Skagath, maybe you can do just even one game in Greyhawk. Mm -hmm. uh, or something uh, else that is yeah. Greyhawk related that is good to stream. I will do yeah. some more um, more uh, yeah. uh, mapping seminars and I will also think I want to do a seminar talking about my own campaign. If not before then, then I think that might yeah. be a cool thing to do. I yep. think we're going to have talk shows, we're going to have yep. uh, adventures, yep. and we're going to try and fill it from, I'll do a thurs my Thursday night game, which will be a kickoff, and then we'll start it sometime Friday late afternoon or whenever we have, yeah. depending on the content, because we may have stuff uh, you know that's on multiple channels. So we're going to have it, we'll have a schedule for you, and we're going to run this through and try and run it through Friday evening, Saturday all day, and then Sunday uh, sometime late morning, late afternoon. And I'll, I'll finish it up with a Gabin show on that Sunday night. So yeah. um, what do you think, guys? I think that's a, I need help. So uh, um, we have a group together. Um, we need, we need, we need those that are interested and serious about participating in this because we got to get with, I don't know if I'm going to do this through uh, Turtle, what's that, Tabletop Games? I don't know yet. We got to figure this all out. So we got five months to do it. So it's kind of on a time frame that five months does, sounds like a lot. It's not. So I oh, just need yeah. to get moving on this. And that's why I wanted to put it out there. Um, yeah, well, fam, I can help you out on that, man. So I don't care. We want to get as much Greyhawk content as we can together and really get the word out there with all those people that are either away from it now. Um, like, and Cold, you bring up a point. Uh, Cold is an ex Greyhawk, loves the Greyhawk channel. I, all those people are gone. We got to get them back involved, right? We got to get them back involved. And then we got to get the big names back involved. So we start with us. And we do all the hard work. And if some of those other people come in, great. But we want to make this fun for everyone. And we, you know, so that's why, like I said, I like to challenge myself. So this is a challenge. Uh, I don't want to make any money off this. This is not about making money at all. Zero. Zero. We wanted to do this for the community. So um, ripple effects, Gagath. So hopefully you're in for one game, man, or something. That, you know, I would love it. I think it would be great because you're in Sweden, man. Seven hour time difference or whatever it is, that would be great. So uh, yeah, I would love to play in that game too. So yeah, yeah, there you go. You got Anna playing that game. Up. Yeah, yeah, I would refix love to. Anna, um, Sprocketeer yeah. in you. That would be awesome. Yeah, so, we can see. Yeah, please reach out to me. We have a group. It's on. Um, so Jason, it's on Greyhawk Online. Sorry. Uh, I have, I set it up as my group, uh, Gary said to put it there and that's what I did. So, uh, you know, Gary, uh, is, is talking about it. Gary is going to, to, we're going to tie this in with Earth Journal 34. So 33 is next. Earth Journal 34 will be the virtual Greyhawk Con edition. And Gary's going to do an up, uh, you know, some spine castle stuff in 34. That's going to be the support. This is Earth Journal 34. So we got that tied in. So we can do sponsors and everything, you know. Josh has got all these ideas. I'm just going to need some help because this is a Herculean undertaking, but I want this to I want this to happen. So, yes, uh, upcoming Earth Journal, he hasn't gotten any submissions yet for Earth Journal 33. Please, if you're interested in writing, write for Earth Journal 33, guys. Um, so I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it, you know. So uh, I guess that's enough, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's three thirty nine in the morning where Skagath is, dude. That's a, that's insane. Yep. I'm so glad that's you dedication. Yeah. So awesome. No monks. Oh, ah, <laughs> yeah, uh, great. So there we go. So uh, Skagath, I may need to invite you to our Discord so you can hop in on that because uh, I know I'm a member of yours. So Phantom, great, awesome. I like to hear all this. So um, that's I, I appreciate that, guys. So hopefully you like the show tonight. I know I, I, I babbled a lot here at the end, but I wanted but to put that fun. out there. Yeah. Yeah, you've done great. We need help. We need, we need help. So uh, and yeah. I, my, I wanted to do two streams a day, and uh, I always said you, you did all this all that streaming during Gary Kanye must go went, went insane. So um, maybe I'll do three three or four streams over the course of the whole thing. So I'm going to need help with a lot of other uh, streams as well. So, and I have no problem hosting the stuff too. So we'll get that worked out. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you oh, Wednesday. You. We'll see you Wednesday for a really cool Legends yep. and Lore. Yeah. And uh, man, this is a, a monster. Oh, there we go. Got a nice follow at the end too. Thank you. Thank you, Babalu, awesome. Babalui. So Babalu twenty three. We'll see you. Uh, see you Wednesday. Let me hit the right button this time. 
Yep. Oh, we're going to raid. We're going to raid. We're going to raid Cobalt yep. Press, guys. Oh, awesome. Yep. Yes, we are going to raid Cobalt Press. And you do work for them? Yes, I do. I just oh, handed over that's perfect. a huge thing. So, oh, yep. that's perfect then. Uh, yeah, um, I just handed over. You, I'm waiting the, for the final kind of save that is done. I've yeah. been working on it a whole damn year. So yeah, it feels we're going to raid into them because um, sh uh, Anna and also DM, the Crafting Muse is DMing right now. So. That's awesome. I think Brian Suskin is probably one of the players, I think. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to start it up. And I'll tell you when we're going to go. Hopefully we get a lot of our people to go on this. We had a ton of viewers tonight. Okay. Still cranking up a little bit more. All right, give me 10 seconds. We'll head in. Right. Thanks all for a great show. Really appreciate it. We'll see you, uh, see you Wednesday. Should have gone. Awesome, guys. Thank you. You know, it's it's a new game. It's not the. It's a new game. They're, they're hosting. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I. Uh, no, that's. Uh, it's not Brian Suskin. It's, yeah, it's, a it's another game. Yeah. yeah, it's another. Yeah, they're hosting. Awesome. See you yeah. soon, guys.